Welcome to the Drop In with Pindy podcast from Warriors TMA Academy, a podcast for everyone from business inspirational leaders, combat sports enthusiasts, martial artists, and fitness fans. Together, we can build our self-discipline, confidence, and positive mindsets through great leaders. Now, here's your host, coach, and former pro fighter, Penny Matahar. Hey, ladies and gents, thank you very much for tuning in to Dropping with Pindy podcast. I'm here once again with the one and only craziest motherfuckers around, Mr. Dave Lee, ladies and gents. And this guy I've known for a very long time. I don't want to say how long because we're going to reveal ages. Uh, but we've been, what, how long has it been, Dave? <sighs> 10 years? <laughs> no, yeah, it's got to be at least 10 years, man. Ten, at least. At least. But one of the, not many people know this. Well, a lot of people know this, but I would say one of the first UK fighters to reach the platform of the UFC. So I'm here with probably yeah. one of the first UFC fighters from the UK, ladies and gents. So we've got a treat for you today in today's podcast. So before we get into the ins and outs of how you got onto the platform of the UFC, what you've been doing since, etc. Where did it all begin? Where did where did Dave Lee and this martial arts journey of of Dave Lee begin, Dave? How did it all uh, start for you? Well, I always say that um, my martial art journey started in the womb. Hey. <laughs> uh, because like I have a sister that's old, like nine years older than me. Okay. My brother is six years older than me. Uh, so sometimes in the early days, I was known maybe as the mistake of the family. I always Fair say I, I was the savior. Yeah. <laughs> so as soon as if, I was- If everyone says so. Yeah. yeah, the savior. Yeah, not yeah, the, the mistake. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. I think that the, the, by the point of like, when I come around, I don't think my parents thought they could have any more kids or whatever, you know? And then the miracle Boom. happened, you know what I mean? Boom. The miracle that is me. Here you are. But uh, so as soon as I was um, born, my sister, my brother was already, well, and, and pretty much my dad, my whole family was like uh, involved in judo, in the British judo like, scene. Oh, wow. Like my sister would go on to represent Great Britain as a, as a youth. She wow. was in the youth team. My brother would, so she's... She obtained her second dan. My brother got his first dan in, in judo. And then my dad would do a little bit of training, but I think he got maybe an orange belt or something like this. But okay. he would go on to be a referee. And then my, so the, the situation would be like, do you have a local tournament? Yeah. And my, my brother and sister would be competing there. My dad would be refing, and my mum would be doing like the the uh like the tuck stall out the front yeah. you know like oh, cool. serving so it was the a tea proper and the family yeah they was banging it proper you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, the yeah. one thing with my parents so they didn't really push us into anything but they really whatever we did do they would support They'd us support you, you know my way. my my brother and sister would have to go train like you know monday through to friday at all different gyms wow. like to get because you know you didn't have a full-time judo gym so it's, monday would be there Tuesday would be there, so they would drive them around and get them following training. Their, following their coach, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I was already, you know, as soon as I could walk, I was on the mat training. There's a, like my mum wow. made me a gi. I, I still have it. My mum made me a gi out of like an old white bed sheet, you know, so, oh, so I could be the little mascot as a baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as soon as I was sort of coherent with things, I was yeah. in that judo uh, format. And I think that's kind of why I always lean more to the grappling arts because i was straight away straight into exposed it. to judo um but time i sort of i was i trained judo as a like as a baby and, a, and a, as a toddler yeah but at, around the time i sort of like got more consciousness of what i was doing and who like you know what i wanted to do yeah um the you know the karate kid was out and i was into the bruce lee movies you know i would be there i remember sticking like enter the dragon that was recorded off of like the telly yeah, you know, yeah, and I'll be yeah, putting yeah. that Watch, in the, watching, in, watching Uncle Bruce, yeah. Yeah, watching, yeah, watching that Uncle on freaking on the on the VHS, just wearing the tape out. Wow. And uh, you know, pause. So you, you you'd say from a okay, yes, you judo judo was judo was brought to you from the family. Yeah, yeah. from from the family. But from it? an inspiration point, of, uh, inspiration point of view, something that kind of highlighted for you, you'd have to say it'd be Uncle Bruce, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, what would happen is is. Uh, I would see like yeah, you know, I was into martial arts. So yeah, we'd, of course. We'd get you know movies, and my my parents would let me watch them, you know. And uh, then the Karate Kid hit, and it was well, oh, let's do karate, let's find karate class. 
I remember then like, uh, and I, I got a black belt in karate like when I was 10. Yeah. I remember like going up to, like I was training in kind of locally and then like going up to uh, like, um, I forget what it was, like Great Russell Street or somewhere like that in London and training with this like Japanese sensei, wow. sensei Noida. And uh, it was like, wow, it's like, you know, I just, I don't really remember, I was really, you know, I'm 10 yeah. years old. So I remember, I just remember the, the, the beautifully polished wooden floor, you know, it's just, you know, really cool. And uh, it's still my favorite certificate. Like 1989, I got that. So, wow. And it was like, you know, nice rice paper, Proper. like, beautiful really solid the best ones yeah Yeah, not maybe the best of uh in the sense of a like arts or whatever it's like you know but as a kid it was cool yeah um it probably got me in a bit of trouble at school like people knowing i was like a black belt karate or whatever but but it was a cool you know as a kid it was great how old were you when you got that 10 did you 10 10 yeah 10 years old getting a black black belt then is it's huge, right? Well, There's I don't know. I mean, olds, uh, you hear I don't that. know about that. I mean, looking back, it was it's pretty like you know, it's like like that the the Shotokan karate. I don't know, I, I don't want to annoy anyone, but it was kind of like the the McDonald's of of uh, martial arts, and it was yeah. You know, back then it was a business, and you know, it was still you. I was a kid, and there's only so much yeah. a kid can do, right? But so it gave me a foundation. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, yeah, from yeah. that, I get a good like spinning kick. Nice. And uh, and nice. and it gave me a discipline to turn up and train, and yeah, you know what it would take to you know. And I think that's the benefit. That's the benefits of martial arts. Yeah, and give me give me like the the connection. You know, yeah, give me the, yeah. the 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 you know like the the flavor. Yeah. You know, so then what I would do is I go to um, like a senior school or secondary school, and I'd get into music, and I'd want to you know play guitar. And get into a band and you know discover that sort of thing. So um, I got into that and stopped training because back then, ten years old, I got a black belt, but you couldn't get your second dan until you like were a teenager. Like you, 16, for, yeah, you had to be older. Certain, you, know, you had to put some time in to get it. So it was like, oh, you know, taking like three, four years to get a black belt, and then all of a sudden you got to wait that amount of time so before you can get another belt. It was like, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to do something else. Yeah, and I was, you know. 11 12 new things are coming my way so you 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 know you get more adult sort of yeah, scope yeah. on things so i got into music which in my opinion later on i would have like i'd have a barbecue and i'd be back into martial arts so from for the age of 12 until sort of 17 18 i'll be heavily into music and i want to say heavily i was like you know in a band i grew my hair you know oh. like i got guitar I had drums you know i had was playing guitar, roll, learning to play, and I was gigging. No, nice. we had some good gigs. We were doing stuff. We and to the latter port, portion of that, I was, you know, we were we were recording. We thought we made it. We were recording in like, like we had a like a I guess it'd be a, a production deal. Yeah, you know, we were recording in studios with like some big artists. So we once recorded in the same studio. Prince had made an album and stuff. No so we were like, that was really cool. You That's know? fucking awesome. Um, you know, so it's pretty it, a good time, mm. um, but then it kind of because back then it, you know we didn't have the YouTube and you can couldn't just put stuff out. Nah, you had to have companies to do this stuff. So and at the time it kind of all died off, and then the band sort of like went different ways. Like the singer went to India and like went right. traveling and stuff. And I was still only young. I was like eighteen, seventeen. I was like, oh, what do I do? So I started to do music myself, put a little studio together, yeah. but I was just fine and I was complaining. Like, you know, like, you know, like, like blues music, it's all about, you know, being upset and sad, right? Yeah. But I was doing music, like it's a bit trip hoppy or whatever kind of music I was making, but it was, I was just moaning. Constant. It's just moaning. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm just, just moaning. And the bass player in the band had started karate. Right. St- I'm starting to train because a few of them, like a few of my friends, were a lot older. They're the same sort of generation. Oh, so no, they were like so, good. Oh, no. They were probably like a gener- like ten years older than me. Oh, I was like oh. a baby. Like I was like, oh yeah, get Dave in here, here play guitar. But I was like, when I was like 16, 17, yeah. they were like in their 23, 24s. Right, right, right. So they were into a bit of fitness and stuff. And yeah. one of them started doing karate. I was like, oh, I used to do karate. Yeah, that's that's cool. Where are you doing it? And he was doing it where I used to train. Oh, wow. So I was like, oh, this yeah. is a weird coincidence. So I went back there just to see. With him? Yeah, I went to see what, because I used to go yeah, there. Yeah, so yeah, I went there and it turned out the guy that was 
uh, in the instructor there now was a guy that I knew. And when I was a kid, I got my black belt around the him. same sort of time he yeah, did. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I remember you. And it's kind of funny because I went there for about a week or so to see if yeah. I liked it. So I was down the bottom, down the bottom with the white belts with the track suits on, doing like whatever the cat is and stuff. And then they, oh, get, if you're going to stay, I'll get you a gi and stuff. I went, all right, cool. Yeah. He said, but you're going to have to wear your black belt. You were a black belt because he, he knew me from you back in the day. That. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't And I'm just, you know, he goes, no, you're a black belt. You know, I'm like, all right. So he got me the gi and I, I rocked up with the gi on. And then all of a sudden I was down there with the last belt. week with the tracksuit yeah, on. Yeah, but now you're up. And I'm up the other end with the black belt. So now everyone's like, what the? How the fuck did that happen? Well, what do you do? I went, and little did I know I was predicting the future because internet back then wasn't really a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went, oh, I just did a course. Did, got a, like, went on Yellow Pages, you know, back then. Yeah. Found a guy, did a course, got a black belt. Little did I know <laughs> that I was predicting the future, right? You could just do this Dude, sort of thing. So now then, it's on Google. So now, I, I, then I would, uh, you know, get back into karate, mm. you know, and I competed a little bit in karate because that's, that's what I really liked with karate was the kumite side of it, yeah. not the katas. I would start a kata in class, like, and then I'd, like, copy this guy. So I'd do this start in this kata, but then by the time I turn around, that guy's there, and I'm, like, copying oh, this shit. guy. I'm, like, I don't know the katas. I forget them all. Yeah. So then it took me about two months and by this time the guy that the bass player that was doing the karate yeah. got me back into it he'd kind of moved on and started doing this kickboxing okay. at, at another okay. place so i'm like yeah the karate is a bit weird i competed a little bit again in the karate in you know karate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'd, they was like it was weird because I'd, I'd only been back a couple of months you know and, and before this spirit. when i was doing music i was you know smoking and all sorts yeah. so i wasn't in any good health but I'd still be able to compete with some of the decent guys. And there was, I beat a guy one time who was apparently on the British squad and stuff. And wow. I'm like, how's that? Really? How's that possible? Yeah. You know? And anyway, so um, we're kind of like, oh, I've got to go do this kickboxing stuff. And then a friend of mine that I was tw like, like uh, good friends with at the time was like, oh, um, I found this guy that does all the, the Bruce, because we had the Bruce Lee books, you know, the fighting yeah, method books, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because I was still in a Bruce Lee back then, course, you know, of course, course you know, course. it stayed with me. So we've got all the Bruce Lee books and stuff. I even had the, I still have the, you know, the, the, the gloves. Yeah. Those ones. Yeah. Those yeah, gloves. yeah. And yeah, the yeah. dragon gloves. Nice. And uh, I goes, oh, we got, there's a guy like two sort of towns on that's teaching the JKD stuff. I'm like, no way. Okay. Yeah. Let's go see him. So instead of going that, that kickboxing route. You went. We went and see this guy who's doing the JKD, who were what I would consider be my first sort of mentor in the martial in my in, in, in my sort of journey real, to MMA. Yeah, my real Ge yeah. adult serious side of martial arts rather than right. the kid stuff, right. you know? Yeah. So this would be a guy called Winston Scott, who would be like a at that time as a black belt oh, uh, okay. or an instructor under um, uh, Guru Bob Breen. Nice. So perfect man so he was doing all the jkd and the carly just out of some community hall okay. so it was cool man it was amazing like nice. um that was it yeah 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 perfect this is the stuff i want this is you know this is everything Bruce, this isn't yeah this isn't like yeah yeah, yeah. just you know as, this is real this isn't like getting a belt or anything like this this yeah. is like this just train and that kind of opened my eyes straight away to you know, not one way isn't the way. You're like, because karate was very much. You have to do this. This is it. This is it. Because wow. even at the time I was doing karate, I kind of ventured off a bit, found a jujitsu school because I had like UFC one and two on tape. You know, was, oh, yeah, what's this yeah. jujitsu so this, this is early nineties, right? So this. Yeah, this yeah, is this well. This is probably like ninety six, seven, oh, okay. eight. Yeah, fair enough. So yeah. UFCs have been going. Yes. And jujitsu was here, but I didn't know where it was. You know I mean, when you say jujitsu, you're on about. I'm Brazilian. talking about Brazilian jiu-jitsu, oh, okay. but I went to like a traditional Japanese. Yeah. Yes. And 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 that was a bit weird as well because I've rocked up and I said that I did karate and they let me wear my black belt from karate oh, there and it was all a bit, still a bit strange. You know what I mean? And they was still had that kind of blind belief. Yes. Yeah. Not not of, like they've been out and tested it. They just had a blind belief. Yeah. You know, couldn't use it because it was too dangerous. Of course. You know what I mean? So it's kind of didn't fit well, and I kind of like so then I once I got once I met Winston, I yeah. just stopped doing the karate and the jujitsu stuff. I just stopped it all Fair. and just 
Focused train with on. Winston because that was the stuff I wanted to do. I, I wanted to train and just get be a martial and artist. With that with JKD starting with JKD, that's what gave you the opening to basically be. It isn't one way. Yeah, exactly. It isn't like, one way. It, we would learn a bit of boxing, and he and yeah. Winston himself had come from like he used to. Um, I think the guy he used to train with was uh, oh, I want to say Derek Campbell, but that might be a. I don't know, that might be a tattooist. I don't know. <laughs> but he used to try to go, I think it's called Mind, Body and Spirit, like Wing Chun. Right, okay. And he would come from that. And then I think he, he had a motorcycle accident and died. And then Winston would go on to try and salvage a bit of his training. And then that's how he ended up with with Bob Breen. Okay. Um, and and Winston was is such a great guy. It's like... It's never, it was never like, he was my first, the first, like I said, always my first mentor that would show me how to teach. Yeah. Uh, and show me, like, not even like, this is how you do it or lay it out in a plan, but he would be the guy you would emulate. Could he, cause yeah. it was never about, I'm the best guy here. You know, very much like I had, a, I put a post out saying, my job isn't to be the, as a coach, not be the best guy in the room, it's to make you the best guy in the room. And that was very much what Winston would do. He would like, I would get on a train to, from my house to like um, Bethnal Green or somewhere. I had to take two trains, take me like half, like half a day to get to wow. Tao Sports wow. at the time and hire instructional videotapes. Like I'd hire the Gracie tapes. I'd hire Sick. like Paul Vunak tapes oh, wow. and, and Dan and Santo tapes and bring them back. And um, ain't it crazy thinking that you ha that's what you had to do? That's what I had to do. I had to watch them and write it all down. And then Man. I remember doing it. And my brother had like one of the first Fuji film digital cameras, yeah, like yeah. massive thing, like state of the art, like three megapixel digital camera. Oh, and I would man. literally take screenshots. So I'd pause the video, <laughs> right? Take a picture and then write it down and then try and take it to the computer bring the picture up, right little thing. I've still got the folder that I made wow. of all the videos. It's crazy you should say that because I was literally, that's, I was just saying how in one previous podcast, how things not, it's, it's, we're in that digital era now. So everything's so easy now. You just, if there's something that you're unsure of on YouTube. Yeah. If it's something you need, to, you don't know. I, I get YouTube. it all the time. People, I say something and then you have to Google it to believe me. Hundred, yeah, it's true. They don't, they don't really, so I might say a word for instance, they and they don't believe it's it. an actual word. Or that um, I may know this word. And then, well, you have to Google, Google it to clarify that it's true. true. It's crazy because we're talking about, like, then going back to what you were doing, where you were actually studying. That's what you call studying. Yeah, I, yeah but doing. I needed it. I wanted information. Yeah, And course. it's great now because the information is in your phone. Yeah. It's, or on the internet separate. or whatever. Yeah, but for me. Back then, it wasn't that easy. I had to find someone. Yeah. So, like, I found Winston and he really opened my eyes to that whole JKD world of, like you know like uh it's they didn't you know like the way that guru dan and asanto for instance mm. didn't stay still with just what say he learned from like bruce yeah, lee yeah he made it what it was and evolve the whole time oh. get better Evolution. as a martial yeah. artist don't just be the carbon copy of your instructor yeah you know like a lot of times i'm talking to my students and i'm like no you should be you should be better than me. It's it's yeah. it's horrible. Like I have, I would be spying with a student, and they they catch me with something, and I'd be like, oh, I'd be. It's a weird emotion because I'm very proud, and that's, upset that's, that's, at the same time. Yeah. Because I showed them how to do it, and then they're doing they it. Pulled it off. Same thing happened to me yesterday. But I was, I was, oh, yeah. That's that's that's, that's otherwise the sport, the art doesn't grow. No. Nah. If my students are worse than me. And then but their you know students are worse than you know, them. You know what the fucked up thing is? You get some instructors out there, I'm not going to mention names, that will only, sh only show them a limited amount. Yeah, but that's ego. Yes, there you go. That's And, and that's for me. Yeah. I saw that in in, in, in the karate and, and the jujitsu. Okay. I saw that. I want to be at the beginning. I want to be the, the guy at the master. front. Yeah. And it's it's that's why I never really got too uh, into teaching kids because I think sometimes the parent brings the kid to the class to be drill sergeant. You know, like... Discipline is beating yeah, it. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm not interested. In that. I'm in, more interested in playing and having games with kids okay. to, to to develop the passion. Yeah, for and the, not for not like looking. being a kid, being oh, I, hate, I don't want to go there. I have to go there. I don't want that. I'd never want that for yeah, me. I want yeah. to come train with me. Yeah, I want them to to get the benefits of martial art because it can you know benefit 
in multiple aspects of your life. Yeah, of course. As it has done for me, you know? And uh, and I think from Winston, that's what I learned. I learned like he was never like closed minded to go, oh, don't get that tape. Yeah. Because like, that's not me teaching you, that's someone else. He would yeah. be, oh, what was on it? Was it good? Yeah. Bring it around. And what we used to do, I used to get the, I remember getting the Gracie tapes, yeah? Yeah. I forget like, you know, volume one or whatever it was. Three of, they had three of them out at the time. I'd get them, I'd write them all out and, and picture them all up. All and up. I'd yeah. go around, because we had the, Winston had a class like Mondays uh, uh, on the community center. And then Tuesdays, Wednesdays, I'd go around his house and we'd be, or I'd, I'd go to the shop, get the videotape mm. and I'd have it for two, three days, right? Yeah. So well, I got the tape, I'm bringing it around. So I'd come around to train with him and I remember I used to be like in the class with the other guys and he, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. he had a job. So it was never one of his, you know, he always wanted to be like an instructor. A full-time instructor. but Full-time, but, but he had a job. He yeah. had kids, mortgage, you know, he well, couldn't take that leap. And he only had like a handful of students at the time. And uh, so, and it was like a great honor for me when he said, oh, if you want um, to come to my house and wow. train, that'd be really good. And I was like, oh man, I must have, I must be good, you know, because yeah, he yeah, wants yeah. to, you know, he wants to train. That's amazing. Like, you know, not, not come and I'll, if you want private training, yeah, I can, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I can train you so, for yeah, yeah. X amount of money. It was just like, listen, I, so cause he wants to let's, train. Let's just do it. Yeah, let's right? get on with it. Yeah, so yeah. I'd go around there with the tapes and, and we'd do the stuff that was on the tape on the kitchen floor. Like, I remember it like being a wooden floor, like he lived in Eland at the time. I remember being on the wooden floor and his missus was walking. What the fuck, what the are you fuck doing? is it? Yeah. Right? And back then, right, UFC and MMA wasn't as big as what it is now. No, no. So MMA, I, I, had, I, I hadn't discovered what MMA. MMA. The only MMA I'd seen, it wasn't called MMA, it was the UFC. I had UFC 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yeah. And the only reason I had that is because my brother. He was like, you know, long yeah, time judo yeah, guy, yeah, but course. he'd been in and out of the army by this time. Right. So he's been in the army for about eight years whilst I was like young. And he goes, oh, you might like this. Yeah. My mates just give me these, look. And it's like one to four UFC. So, oh my God, what's this? It's amazing, nice. right? Yeah, yeah. So we, we watched that and then uh, and I talked to Winston. Yeah, Winston knew all about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These Gracie guys in America. Yeah, it's amazing, da, 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 from Brazil, da, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, cool. And then uh, I would train the, Winston whenever I could, you know, around his house and at, the, at his class. And then, um, and of course, the JKD world, especially here, we had a link to Bob Breen. So I would go, you know, Bob Breen, do a knife day. Yeah, we're going. So Winston awesome. goes, oh, there's a seminar on. We That's should dope. go. All right, we're off. And I remember going to like Bob's and then, uh, and like I said, I was hungry for information yeah, of course and i'd go to bob's and i'd buy bob's tapes you know like knife tape the locking tape or whatever tapes they had i yeah, just yeah, buy yeah. them i wanted it i wanted it you needed and i couldn't watch them enough you know yeah build my library of, i still got them it was like wow. all the stuff and i'd buy like and then you'd uh you know you'd get the magazine and you see the ad oh i can buy this so i send off to get the yeah, tape yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah yeah and then what would happen i'd be go up to uh Winston would introduce me to, because I wanted to go train. Oh, I'd already met, no, I did a knife day seminar at, um, or a summer camp, something like that at Bob's place in Dartford. And Eric had been there maybe two, three months previous. Wait, how long, uh, so what era is this? This what is maybe late 90s, 99. Wow. 99, 2000, yeah, 99 maybe. Because I, what happened? I went there and there was three tapes Whilst they were making lunch, uh, there was free tapes uh, on the on the on the counter. Yeah, yeah. Was, the video what tape. is? Yeah, this what is? VHS me up. What yeah, is? man. And they were like, I don't know, thirty quid each, forty quid each, something like this. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I said, What is this? And he goes, Oh, this is Eric Paulson stuff. And I'm like, Oh. And they were talking about the seminar that happened that yeah. I missed. Oh man, this guy's really good. I'm like, okay. Killer leg locks one, two, and like chicken wings one, or something like this. <laughs> Those are the free tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I grabbed them. Yeah. Excellent. Did the seminar, or the two days that were there, and then uh, got back and watched the tapes because at the time I did. It was 1999 because I did okay. the I did the James Wilkes uh, at the time brought Paul Vunak over in, uh, in Bournemouth. Oh, Bournemouth. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Bournemouth. I still have a T-shirt. 
Right. Okay. Fair enough. And because uh, I was, I'd love because because I was getting. This is when James Wilkes was. He was UK. here. Yeah. Yeah. Before he went to. The yeah. States. So yeah. Um, he would have him over in Bournemouth. It's like the only one time that Paul, Paul Vunak did a came, seminar. Yeah, yeah. But because of the my exposure through tapes, I wanted yeah. videotape, videotape. Paul Vunak had a bunch of tapes out. Okay. And I was like, and I see in like the one of the magazines, his progressive fighting systems, you could do like, you know, like intensive courses and the the whole work. Yeah, let's go. And I was like, oh man, I could go to California. I could go to uh, yeah. San Diego and train with him. Yeah. And I talked to him at uh, the seminar. I said, I hear you. Paul. Yeah, to Vunak, yeah. Paul Vunak, when he was here, I go, oh, you do, you have people come out and yeah. stuff. I think I'm even on the video. Yeah, they did a video. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if I got the video, but. They did the video and I've got this freaking like hat on because I had long hair at the time, right? And when I was training, the hair would go everywhere. So I had a hat on right. and I'm pretty sure he, he, I'm sitting in the crowd, like yeah, the, yeah, when yeah. he's watching, he picks me up. To them. Does that, oh, yeah. Right? I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I might have made that up, but I'll have to double check. But, so I was going to go train with him. But then once I saw Eric's right. tapes, I was like, oh man, this is the, this is this the crap. Is the, this, this is, is the stuff. This isn't like in the gi or like a different art. This is... But these wow. are videos, I remember one of the first videos I saw of Eric was um, when he was doing the structural videos and what I, what I had to go and train with him for. What, yeah, because it wasn't when like... Was, when he was doing the, uh, I think these videos were in the Inner Santo Academy. Yeah, the, the, in, the in Marina Down... Uh, yeah, Marina Down Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That place next to the Farama. Yes. Hotel. And I remember watching those videos and I was like, whoa. Yeah, because but the, 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 the Gracie stuff was very... Uh, the video, the way they presented it was very like a traditional art almost, like right. moves one, two, and three. Yeah. And which is cool, yeah, you know, yeah, great. Yeah. And then, but, and then the Vunak stuff was all, you know, mental, you know, yeah. self defense, head butts, you know, like, yeah, real, Killing, like, like, street yeah, fighting yeah. kind of stuff, right? And, and I'll never forget, uh, uh, I was in a pub with some friends of mine, and you got to understand that this, this sort of time, I was sort of, is like a transitional time for me from being a musician yeah because i'm still i'm still, still floating around playing guitar and i was stuff. just about to ask you that because whilst you're all going to winston's you're going to do these seminars with bob breen mm -hmm. you're going you found these tapes you're studying and bearing in mind when i say studying and for the younger listeners out there because they don't they won't get this they won't get the fact that you had to put a vhs tape in yeah oh, and it's not as easy as skipping it had to be fucking rewind rewind watch it forward oh, man. and then pause. yeah, it's, yeah and your the, pause wasn't a pause it and was a flicker yeah and the slow motion was literally one image frame, frame, bam, frame, bam, frame. bam 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 so it's very time struggle, consuming the struggle it's, was it's, real it's, yeah for fuck it was man it's time consuming yeah so Whilst doing all of this, which sounds like a hell of a lot, what were you doing in terms of, were you still doing your music? Were you working yeah, at I mean, this I was, point? What, I, would, what? I would, like, even when I was doing music, so I'd, I'd left school in 94, and I was, uh, I just, I got a job landscape gardening, say, just because my dad knew a guy. My dad at yeah. the time was a postman, and I was going to become a postman, but I had to wait till the intake sort of thing. Yep. So I went done landscape gardening, and then uh, I become a postman. I was a postman for two years. I never held a job down longer than two years. I was a postman wow. for two years, and now I got sacked from the post office because. Why? Well, again, like <laughs> how can you <laughs> like when I was when I was born? Like I said, I was like a maybe a mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forward slash, Save. the savior. I'm more of an innovator, right? Because when I was working at the post office I was into my music so what would happen I'd be getting up at f like four in the morning go work at five okay. finish work one you know 12 one o'clock yeah, yeah, yeah. then go straight to the studio sit at the studio you know smoking cannabis and all sorts and then oh no I better get home and have like an hour's sleep and go work so of course I would get to the post office yeah the sorting office, I'd sort out my walk. And back then you had two deliveries, yeah? Right. You had first delivery, which was all your first class mail, and your second delivery, which was your second, second class man. mail. So me being a little bit tired, I would get my first delivery, put it in the boot of the car, and get out to the, you know, deliver the, you know, the first street and then have a nap. Subsequently, the nap would be a little <laughs> bit longer than I thought. Yep. And not I'd wake power, up. Not oh, a power No, I, I better get on with this. So I'd go in and do my delivery and then I'd get back and by the time I'd like got the second delivery going, yeah. like all bundled up in a bag, ready to go, it, I, I've got to get to the studio. 
So I just technically, well, at the time, it's against the law to hold the 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 Queen's mail. Right. It, so I leave it in the car and then just shove it in the post for the next morning. Technically illegal, yeah. Yeah. Technically. But now you only get one delivery. You don't get a second delivery. I don't. Yeah. You? you only get one delivery. So in my in my um, opinion. In my defence, I, <laughs> I was an innovator yet again for the future. You know what I mean for yeah, the future. Yeah, so yeah. I, you know, I got the sack, and probably a manager probably got rewarded for such an well, idea. Yeah, there you so, go. There you go. So the idea of now one delivery come originally from, from me. Yeah, it's, go. it's another, I got I got many stories, <laughs> similar things. But um, so then I would just flip jobs. You know, what I mean, I'd yeah. get a job on an agency because I didn't care. I, I was a musician. Yeah, I'd I'd get a call up. Um, like to go on Virgin Radio to their breakfast show as a band. You know, we're going to sit in the audience, like you know, on yeah, the yeah, show, yeah, and yeah. do something. Oh, all right, oh, I'm not going to work then. Tell her. Sound. So I was just doing odd jobs. Right. Like I'd work. Your passion was at the time. Your focus. Your passion. Yeah, was I was music. working in like I don't know candle factories, yeah, like doing all packing stuff. books, whatever I could to still earn a bit of living. I, yeah. I I would be a dustman, all sorts of stuff. All yeah. Books. And because uh, I didn't really care, I just, yeah. that was a bit of money to. You know, I was living at home with my parents; yeah. it wasn't a big deal. It's like you know, you, you're trying to be. You got to spend time with both. Yeah, but you were trying to be with the martial arts and right. Not not the, so much an athlete. Yeah, you were trying to. I was never an athlete no, then. It was no, it was no, all no. about just learning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I had a. I remember I was going to say like I was at a barbecue at my house. Yeah, and like uh, my friend, where I hadn't been doing the music or not. Um, uh, a really good friend of mine. Uh, I've, I've, I've known him. He taught me how to play guitar. I still know him today. Like I've known him for you know, over 25 years. Yeah, and uh, one of my original teachers. Yeah? Wow. Because he goes, "Oh, Dave, why don't you like? I'll play drums, or you could play drums, and I'll play." You know, we get back into it. Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, I get it." He goes, "What's all this stuff you're doing? This fighting stuff? Weird, man. What are you doing?" <laughs> I said, "Listen, man. I got to give." If I'm doing the music or doing this, I've got to give it a hundred percent of my energy because otherwise it's not going to amount You're to nothing. Gonna, yeah, yeah. And I said, and it's the same as music. He goes, what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, it's it's art. I'm just expressing myself through a different art. Yeah. Like some martial art. Yeah. It's an it's the same as I think as is music because I I kind of I kind of would say like like in a loose term I'm I'm quite creative. So with the music I was quite creative with that. Mm -hmm. And now I've got this other thing I want to do, this martial art. I want to put my energy into creating something with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I find the the two things are quite linked because they are just expression of like sure. human movement. Yeah. Instead of like me moving my hands to hit drums or play guitar, my movement is Pen trying to throw face. someone or control someone or, yeah. you know, in a fighting sense. Of course. So that's where I kind of... Insane. made the transition and i went right i'm just gonna keep training because the music again i was just moaning i was making music and i was just like this is depressing because it's like and, and and then you couldn't make a song or a track and then you had to you know burn it on a cd or or yeah. you know put it on a on a cassette tape and send it to a record label to maybe have yeah. someone listen to it with all the other ones that they got yeah. have a manager to get you a gig and it was it was a you couldn't just put something on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. That YouTube didn't it exist. Wasn't easy, that, that, yeah. So I would be doing that, and uh, and 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 what would happen? I'd I get those tapes from from Bob's Academy of Eric, and at the end of the tape, there's like a yeah, little that came up. yeah, it's like yeah. A, he had a little like a documentary, yeah. like short documentary, yeah. and it was like oh, and I have guys come from all over to come train with me, do like a a week, yeah. two week intensive, and I'm like oh, what's this? That sounds interesting. Cool. Oh, what's this? And then, um, you know, back then the internet was like the yellow pages. Like it was just a, uh, a you know, dictionary of, you know, like yeah. ads. Not, yeah. not ads, but like a classified. It wasn't like you have moving images. Or, yeah. It was yeah. literally like a page flat. An image. That was you it. might have an email. Like the email I had was on a phone, like a house phone. Like Possibly. a BT had this phone that was, and the internet was... Like the the email was on there. It was weird. I, f I don't know how that happened, but it was weird. And uh, I, I didn't email Eric because uh, I would just be I said, just a seed that was so, sown in my mind because I was going to yeah. train with Paul Vunak. That's the idea. That was, I could yeah, go out yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I took a seminar. 
um, I'm not sure if it was, I think it might have been the first time I met Eric, it was, have a picture. Um, <laughs> Guru Dan did a seminar at Rick Young's place yeah. up in Spot. Edinburgh. Okay. Yeah? So of course, Winston, you know, Guru Dan's know. over, let's go. He was over London or Edinburgh. Those were the two yeah, destinations yeah, you would go. So I, we went up to Edinburgh um, and trained and Eric came with Guru Dan and I think, because uh, I think the first time I trained uh, in a center seminar, like uh, Eric wasn't there, it was like uh, Joe Clark would come. Yeah, yeah. And Eric yeah. wasn't there, like the London one. But yeah. Edinburgh, Eric was Eric there. Eric was there, I remember. And yeah. Eric did like a little, uh, in the Saturday morning say, he did the, like an hour Was this the time Mauricio Gomez used to go there as well? Or was yeah. this before? There was, a there was a time. Because I remember Mauricio Gomez went one. There was a time, I remember we was up there and Mauricio and uh, Hodger were there. Yeah. I think like on the Friday at the, yeah, at the, fr the gym. Yeah, the Friday, yes. So we might, you might have been there at the same time. I might have been, I might have been. And it was a time when Roger was there. Oh, this is my kid, Roger. Yeah, yeah, backpack jujitsu. Yeah, no. And everyone, he, he, he rolled with everyone in there. The, there's only about 20, 30 people there. Yeah. But it was like um, Rick's place on the Friday night. Yeah. And then, and then the, the seminar was, was at the, the leisure center. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. And then Eric would do like the Saturday morning, like pre yeah. seminar, yeah. like the hour pre, in the morning, yeah. they'd do little works, like do his thing. Yeah. And then Guru Dan would come a little later and they'd do the whole thing like later. And I'm like, oh, this, oh, this is as good as the tapes, man. This, mm -hmm. the way he taught, my, my mind was blown. It's like, man, it's just like, pop, 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 pop. Yeah. this is amazing. So I got talking Did to Do you remember Eric. anything? It's, yeah, little yeah. bits and pieces. Uh, bits, yeah. Like I remember one seminar that Eric taught at um, Bob Breen's, at the at the you know the the academy in Bob. Uh, okay. You know, it was up the stairs and you know the the wooden floor like it's like karate school looking place. Yeah, and he taught like uh, uh, like a Shuto series, like twenty nine locks. And I was and don't forget at this time I'm I'm videotapes videotape. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, I remember getting home, I'm on the train and I'm bam, writing bam, it all out. Boom, I've still got like, then I go home and put it on the computer. Okay. 29 locks, boom, shoot, I don't know what series it was, four, five, ten, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I remember him teaching that and that's- Stuck in your head. Stuck in, and the way Eric taught really clicked with me. Yeah. And he taught in such a way I could remember it all. And you can- Because it was a chain of series and I was like, I, I can really it. remember this. Yeah, yeah. The way that the way was taught. Can, the way he- it's not necessarily the names, but it's the way he interlinks one to another to mm. another to another, and it, it all makes sense. And it all, I don't know, for me personally, the way it moves around the body, and he's like, ah, yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's, it's almost like, like a, an engine, isn't it? Like it, yeah. it made sense how it worked, yeah. So it was easy to get from the point reason a I was to asking, me. can you remember it? Is because I remember the first time for me personally when I went to when I when Eric was here at uh, I don't know if you ever went there, but Paul Kelly's place in Hal's Own, no, so that was the first time I met Eric, and I remember being a bit starstruck and I was like, ah, oh, that's Eric, like, like, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Eric. But I, I couldn't remember a single thing. It was because I didn't realize how he taught in Facebook yeah. Fit, and I was like. Well, I, I used to have that when I'd go to like Guru Dan's uh, seminars because oh, yeah, it was yeah. like, well, now I'm going to show you, now I'm going to show you slow motion. I'm like. Where? <laughs> when? I don't, know, I don't know about anybody else, yeah, but <laughs> on what dimension was that slow motion? <laughs> And then he would just teach you like the 300 year history of that technique. And I'm just yeah. like sitting there going, and then I talk fried. to whoever, whoever I was with, cause I just rock up by myself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, did you get that? <laughs> and they go, yeah. And we walk back to where he was and go, um, did you get it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Disarm, 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 disarm. Because the, the, the stick and the knife was cool. I loved that. Yeah. But it never resonated. It's not, it was just, that, I was doing that because that was kind of a part of the package. Yeah. But, you know? yeah. Part of the JKD package, yeah, JKD yeah, yeah, yeah. and Carly package. Because they all changed it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then yeah. I got talking to uh, Eric uh, in Edinburgh. And I okay. went, dude, I, you, do you have people come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, send me an email. We'll sort it out for you. You know, we're, we're, we're booked the hotel. Sweet. And we'll have you come out. And I went, oh, this is amazing. Because I, I was like, you know, when I was young, 16, and, I, you know, like your friends went off traveling and, and I wanted to go travel. I want to go yeah. see some stuff, but yeah. I didn't want to go like around Europe. You want and, to go and but, yeah. and like wait in a bar and serve food. I wanted to. If I'm gonna go away, I wanted yeah. to. And at the time, because I I was so knowledge hungry. Yeah. Like I would train, and at the time I would be training, and like I'm like, well, I'm doing this martial arts stuff. I'm, I should get a bit more 
physical because again from when i was at school that like 11 12 years age i got out of karate but now i'm playing guitar so i never really hit the gym yeah, i did it now i was playing guitar right. studying that and i think that's what i got from early days of training martial arts was study and when i started Learn to play it. guitar yeah, yeah, yeah. i got a I got to sit there in the evening with the guitar not plugged in and just bum, 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 bum. play guitar like learn had to oh. learn it you had to otherwise you can't do it right no point. yeah so when i started doing the martial arts again I, that was my logic i was like i need to learn it learn. so it. i need my body to be stronger i need to l learn how to lift weights and stuff so i then ask my friends who lift weights and 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 you know back then you'd ask people there wasn't you know you get a book or something like this yeah. but yeah there's so many different opinions and what to do yeah, and, yeah, and like i was it. like this is i remember that yeah you're telling me this you're telling me that and this is this is like uh, this is and bullshit i can't one set, yeah who's right here so i thought right if i'm gonna learn this you need to do it i might as well go get a qualification so i i looked up like a local college or something like this and at the time i was um i was i i, I, I like to say i was in advertising but i was sticking posters like billboard posters Okay. I just fell into this another job. Fair enough. Billboard posting. Yeah, I was in advertising. Yeah, front yeah, line, yeah, front yeah, line advertising. Yeah, yeah man. It so, looks good for the CV. So what happened? I would be doing this job. So it would be like just near where I lived, like 20 minutes away. I go there. Yeah. Get all the posters that you'd stick up for the week, and then off you go. But what I do is I kind of I enroll in the local college to do like a gym instructor course, and a personal training course in the evening. So I would study personal training twice a week in the evening uh -huh. and a gym instructor one with the kids in the daytime uh -huh. so i'd get my go in the morning early to get all the work yeah don't didn't do it like my um, post office days yeah <laughs> and then just go to the college learn do the course yeah, yeah. and then if i oh, if the weather was okay i'd go do the work but then i, I read, eventually got sacked from that job because um I wasn't doing the work, right? No, no, no. And then the guys were there going, why are you working here? You were like, you've qualified, because the course was two years. So I probably, I might have had that job a little longer, but I hadn't held, a, it was like two jobs that I held for two years. Yeah. I'd never had a job longer, because I had other yeah. things, I wasn't yeah. concerned. So I qualified as a, you know, I did the courses and yeah. qualified as a uh, gym instructor and PT. Yeah. So that, because of the martial arts, is why I got into the fitness side of things. I wanted to learn the information yeah. and I didn't want to just get it from someone because they had an opinion it. who had an I opinion. wanted to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I learned the anatomy and learned. So the just study. before you go on to the next, you'd say you're a perfectionist almost in each art you've done. Cause I don't know. Same, same thing with the music from what you're saying, you've, you're trying to do it to perfection. Same thing with learning the art for the art to try and get it to perfection. And now with the fitness. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if I was a perfectionist. I just wanted to learn it. I just wanted to. Had a passion. Get, just get to the nuts and bolts of it. Just understand it more. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think what the, the like training with Winston at that time, the JKD was just, you know, the whole JKD philosophy of, you know, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, and then mm. add what essentially is your own. That really resonated with me. Mm. So when I was talking to, you know, this guy about you know bodybuilding and this guy was about that i'm like that doesn't make any sense so i you know i'd yeah. get that information and and then i was immediately rejecting it or rejecting some of it so i wanted to get rather than just a textbook because we're going to stand as well is i'm probably in, when i was at school i would be classed as thick yeah same like as. um nowadays <laughs> you'd probably be classed as like a dyslexic yeah. Uh, Cause I, I, my reading and my, so my, my, my parents, for instance, my dad was really bad at spelling, mm -hmm. but amazing at maths. Right. My mum was really bad at maths, but really good That's at spelling. So I got her um, bad maths and his bad spelling. Yeah. So I, was, I couldn't, you got two like my maths and my, my, my reading was very bad. Yeah. You know, like even now it's, I mean, I can read. Even if I if I read like a fiction book, I'd like it would wear me out. Yeah. But I can read like a, a an encyclopedia, which Ooh, a more and factual it, and it's book. More like, wow. Yeah. And I would some people would think I'm quite educated, but not in a traditional sense, right? Yeah. I can say a lot of words, I just can't spell them, right? So uh, 
so my learning that's why martial arts was really good for me because yeah. my the learning is very practical it's not fear like theory yeah. maybe that's why i didn't really gravitate to the karate side of things it's very theory isn't it yeah like because even like a kata for instance is is theory yeah even though i'm practically doing it it's, still, it's theory of yeah. what might happen and what move what's the yeah. move for yeah, yeah. whereas the arts that i've gravitated to it's very easy to understand what you're doing because i'm grabbing you and pulling you here or i'm hitting you in the face yeah it's practical so at that time i'd be learning and when when i'd learned the 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 the, the, the pt stuff and that it was like the first time that i've actually wanted to academically learn something and it would be the first time I would then go on to pick a job for myself. And I think I would attribute that to the martial arts because I was yeah. learning the, the fitness stuff because you of the martial arts. Benefit. I wanted to, because yeah. I was still, even when I was training with Winston, I'd rock up. I used to have like an old 1969 Mark II Cortina, yeah? You rock up like a, it was gold, it like a pimp, you know what I mean? Nice, Stupid. Nice. But, uh, I'd still be smoking cannabis at that time. I'd just be smoking all the time and, and it'd just be a thing. And I'd be like, and I remember sitting, I remember predominantly sitting in the car park waiting for everyone to turn up. It was quite funny because of the karate, I did a thing on uh, BT Sports, like guess the celebrity. I had to spar with a, um, uh, a rugby league guy. Um, okay. Martin Afire, I had to spar with him and they filmed him and that to guess who he was. And I remember being in this car park and I'm s still smoking a joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the guys, are, and I'm sitting there going, you know what, this, what am I doing this for? Yeah. So I just threw that out the window and that'd be the last sort of bit of like joint I'd joint smoke. Up. And I'd write, let's get in the health and let's get my body good for this like yeah. activity that I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then that, and that was the same night these guys would rock up and go, don't use on telly. You just, you just on the telly. I'm like, what? No way. Because I didn't think they'd use the footage. It turned out, turned out they, it was they, on they, the uh, question of sports. Hilarious. Yeah, that was and uh, so f then I once once I sort of met Eric and stuff, I go, right, I'm going to go train with Eric. Yeah. Then that's when the MMA stuff started. Because even then it wasn't, as Eric's as stuff no. wasn't MMA. No, it was shoot. I'd been, was, I'd been, yeah. I'd been uh, exposed to a few bits and pieces. And then Winston said to me, oh, if you're going to go train with Eric, I'd organize to go train with Eric later on in the year. Okay. So, so mid-year, I go train with him in November time. And Eric goes, well, if you're going to go train with him, you need to go train with my other friend as well. And it's these, the, he, this guy, uh, uh, one, another one of um, uh, Bob Breen's like, instructors, okay. like one of his black belts. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, this guy's name is Otto Madaras. And he, he I think he lives, he lives now in Canada, but he would also be um, training with Rick Young. Right, okay. Right? So amazing level, yeah. you know, it, it, good at grappling. He was more of a grappler than Winston was, say. Right. Okay. So I'd go train with him. I'd take a day off work, wow. try to go through Hackney, and train and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. at this time, I think I got a job. Maybe I was. I'm not sure what I was doing then. I don't think I had a job in the gym at that time. But off I went. Yeah. And uh, and then so I then train with him a little bit, get more versed in the grappling because I wasn't yeah. training grappling in a class anywhere. No. Um, I was training with Winston and doing our house. little bits in the house, kitchen, sorry. doing the, the grappling. Kitchen, yeah, kitchen. kitchen. So I'd go to Otto's house and train with him and, you know, he, he got me doing all sorts of weird stuff, like a lot of Qigong stuff, like holding my arms out and all this kind of iron bar training yeah, to get me yeah, strong, yeah, yeah. but also a lot of grappling, you know, more so without the gi, didn't really have a gi. He, kind of he did a bit of like the like back then rick was teaching like attacking and he was uh he wasn't teaching jujitsu right. and all that so this is probably like 99 year 2000 okay okay and then i'd go train with eric so i'd get on the plane i had to fly to uh flew to ireland dublin and then dublin to la amazing airplane um empty there's not many people on there yep you know uh, uh tv in the aisle not didn't on have it on the headrest. No, no, no. Yeah, didn't, yeah, have yeah, that, yeah. didn't have that kind of technology yeah. then, man. <laughs> TV in the aisle, you know, flew over there, you know, budget, trying to get the budget flight. So it was, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. different direction. It always amazed me how the cheaper flights, I had to get two planes. Make any sense? Sure, it's yeah. cheaper for one, one, one plane. Anyway, Barrett, but yeah. so I get to LA. Uh, um, I think Eric picked me up at the time. Or did he send someone? 
I think he picked me up. Picked me up. Yeah. Go drop me off the like the Farama and stuff, and and we go train, and it was just straight away, boom. And the good thing about I met him already. Yeah. But I'd met him at a seminar. It wasn't like we were best buddies or anything. Just met him at a once, seminar. Once met him once, bam. Yeah. So you know. That same. Spoke same, to him briefly. Same, yeah. Same thing with me. Yeah. Pick me up. Drop me off a hotel. Right. I pick you up in the morning, or I literally the hotel was there. The uh, the gym was you know a walk, walk. two minute walk. It was oh, like oh you didn't get to, you didn't have to train straight away. No, I think I. Well, me, I'm not I sure what first I did. Time, I think I time dropped I in late. First time I think I, I got I might got a cab. I don't know. You might, but for me, I remember the first time I got I didn't get picked up by Eric or Tanya. This is the time like mine was mid two thousands, but one of the one of the girls Nicole picked me up. Got to the like she. Got to the gym. I thought oh, I'm going to the gym to say hello to him. Yeah, yeah, no, no, training, bus. Boom, <laughs> straight onto the mats. I was yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> <I just, laughs> yeah. You know, get, jet, like, guess get rid of the jet lag. Literally. But yeah, I would. I, yeah, maybe I don't really recall like the first day. But we got there. Yeah. And we was training, and it was like, this is amazing. Yeah, great. Boom, and we train in the morning, and then it would be get some lunch. Cool, we go get some food and then boom, train in the afternoon. Yeah. And then boom, right, we're staying at the Inner Santa Academy to do some classes. Nice. Uh, or I'd, we'd jump in the car, go across town to Boxing Works right. and do the classes there. So it's just like, Bam. what you're going to stand is, is, it's like a the information was just being poured in. It was just like, oh my God. And it, we were struggling to absorb it. Yeah. And we, and we yeah. he would record it for me as well on a videotape. And I, I you'd, at the end of the like session, like the weekend, yeah. when I'd be leaving, they'd pop around, give me the tape and off I go, right, try and learn all this stuff. And then uh, the first time I went, I think it was the first time, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was the first time I went and I was, um, we was training at the Insano Academy and uh, it was amazing because he goes, uh, Eric goes to me, oh, do you, would you want to train with uh, Larry Hartsell? Oh. I went, oh, I said, uh, well, um, I said, don't, listen, man, you, to what? Um, don't worry about foot, it's Friday. Don't train me Friday. Yeah. Uh, I'll set up with Larry Hartsell to, to to train. And I'm like, oh, right. And don't, bear in mind, we're in the Inner Santa Academy. Yes. No one's there. It's just me and Eric. You know, and you've got all that like, Bruce Lee stuff everywhere, you know, I'm just like, he's you're, bad. You're, more, you're kind of bucket, a bit you know. starstruck by it. Oh, man, this is amazing, yeah? Yeah. And uh, even, like, I remember, like, because I'm there by myself, you know, yeah. and I'm in the hotel. I, like, I think one night I trained with Eric in the daytime, and then uh, I stayed, uh, went back hotel, come back in the afternoon or the evening, yeah. and did a couple of classes at the Inner you know, Santa Academy. I yeah. think I did, like, a Thai boxing class. And uh, the CLAC class. And there's like, bearing in mind, I've done it in the center of seminars in this country, Edinburgh and London. There's like 300 people there. And I did the CLAC class and there's like seven, eight of us. I'm like, Whoa. what the, man, you guys don't get it, man. Yeah. Normally there's like 300 people here. Yeah. But CLAC, you know, it, it, the sarong on, I mean, I didn't even, I, did, I didn't care what we were learning. Yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. there with Dan, you yeah. know? And even like, uh, even in the Thai class, it was a bit more busier. Right, yeah. and I'm putting the pads away, and and Guru Dan's like, oh, how's how's the training going with Eric? It's good, yeah. I'm like, uh, um, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, Miss. Oh, what do I call him? Uh, uh, yes, yes, Guru Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. He's talking to me. Amazing. Yeah. And I remember being on the phone back home, just like phoning up at a certain time at the hotel. Yeah. How's it going? Oh no, I can't. I couldn't believe it, man. This uh, Dan is talking, and they don't. They didn't know who Dan and Santa was yeah. right. Yeah. I don't know what he's talking to me today. I yeah. couldn't believe it. I mean, it's the equivalent of someone like going to train with like, you know, the the, the English team and like yeah. David Beckham coming over yeah. and talking to him as a kid. And they're like, oh, this oh is amazing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then like, Absolutely. Uh, and so now we're in, a, we're in the academy and I'm standing like this, Eric's in Guru's office oh, to, on the phone to Larry Hartzell. Arranging training. And I'm like, I'm sitting you know, on the mat. We've just finished training. He goes, Dave, uh, speak to Larry. I'm like, Oh, oh shit! Uh, 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 hello, Mr. Hartsell. How are you? You know, like hey, Dave. I can understand what you're saying. Yeah, like, yeah. Dave, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh my god, yeah, cool, yeah. And I'm like, so I, Eric arranged for me to go train with him uh, on the Friday afternoon. Right. And he'd come and pick me up. Larry, get in the car, Larry, Larry Hartsell, wow. come to the hotel. Wow. And the, is, hello, that's... Mr. Lee. There, there's a Mr. Hartsell down here for you. I'm like, you fucking sweet man. Let's run down the hotel. Um, took him to the garage, his house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, 
I don't. I rem- we trained a lot of stuff. He didn't. He, he kind of didn't know what to teach me. Because what do you want to learn? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, if you want to teach me, yeah, yeah. So he showed me a lot of trapping, okay. and like a lot of um, like a pad pad work, but with trapping. Yeah. Nice. Look, I've been working on this, and but and by this time, I'd think he'd had a bout of cancer, so he's a bit more of a frailer version of himself he wasn't like the tank top you know wearing he was he looked a bit older and he was like you know this is like yeah 2000 so he was like i think he'd had a bout of cancer and uh i couldn't understand a word he said it was like being in a room with like what i'd imagine elvis sounding like yeah and but he's i'm like i don't know what he's saying man yeah and there's another kid there from like South Africa or something. And I'm like looking at him, I'm like, I've got a clue what's going on. But he's just like, as soon as he laid his hands on you, like you yeah, trapped like this, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Like his energy was just like, boom. Oh, you know what I mean? Boom. Like it was, it was amazing. And then I've we never, trained there for a couple never, of hours. I've never got trained with Trained a couple of hours and he just dropped me back to the hotel and I'm sitting there like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is cool. And then uh, like, uh, anyway, I get home. And then funny, funny thing was I, I come back to, to England and go, I've got all this information, I've got to train, da, 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 right, let's go train. Back to, Winston. back to Eric's, but this time I got, a, uh, back to Winston's, yeah. this time I got a tape with me on it. Yes. Yeah, let's train this stuff. And then, uh, and it was cool because Eric would come was about a month. Regularly? Later. Yeah. The, I mean, Eric would come back over here doing some seminars yeah. maybe two, three months later. Perfect. So it's Perfect. good timing. And then what I would do, it's like a refresher type of refresher, but you know, and again, I was fresh on his. I've I, I known him now for one week, sort of yeah, thing. I, yeah, you know, yeah. I've met him. We've spent time together. Mm-hmm. We've uh, he knows me. Yeah. And then, because uh, um, I remember being like a, 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 in Edinburgh for say at another seminar, and we was up there training, and uh, Eric was there for. I think it might have been Eric's weekend seminar there. And Eric, okay. and Eric walk in, bear in mind, it's like 200 people there. These, yeah. This time, seminars were massive. Massive. Because yeah? the massive. information wasn't massive. as available yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, of course. Everyone was there. And I remember being there like, yeah, I've, I've been training with Eric. Of course, yeah, yeah. I brought some friends that were my training partners. Yeah, yeah. We was up there like, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, me and Eric, you know, we'd train. Yeah, me and Eric. And Eric just like walked past me, didn't even see me. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh my god went to the toilet had a little oh cry yeah, he didn't see me and then like it, it, it went like you know he, he's talking to everyone he's, you know, he's talking to Rick and that yeah. and I'm sort of sitting there and I thought oh do I go over to him or, and then oh, I feel, feel a bit of a dick now yeah. oh. and then like oh, I sort of caught his eye <laughs> <laughs> hey and he's like oh thanks, thanks. <laughs> hey, your rep got me. saved your rep got saved me. And then uh, <laughs> we train that weekend and stuff, and then and then what would happen when he when he would do his this, like um uh the, he'd do a little tour anyway. Right? Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. would just try and get to the seminars. I remember we did a seminar up at some sort of like a uh, taekwondo like club okay. in, in a in a sports center, and uh, it was cool because I say it's cool. I think he just because he was there by himself, he didn't have anyone with him. Yeah, this would be four twenty, and. Uh, uh, he'd just get me selling his t-shirts, so he'd get me doing stuff, and I'm like, and I demo with him, and it was like really cool because I like you're learning at the same. Yeah, I'd take yeah. Winston up there. It was funny because I think I forget. Yeah, it was. I think it was in Bath. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it was in Bath. Yeah, it was because we this was Taekwondo in, place or just yeah. Ja- yeah. It was in Bath because I remember we was in a bar as we left. I, did, I was driving. I didn't drink or anything yeah, back yeah. then. I was like, you know serious for you you this is your mindset I was get, yeah i was getting into it like all the fitness stuff i was getting into it and i'd, I'd uh so he'd do the tour so as soon as he's here i was doing every trying to get to the if they were within an hour of me driving somewhere two hours i'd go because it was less than a freaking plane yeah, ticket of course, man. and then i'd go just go out whenever i could jack up a credit card and just go because okay. um, i just wanted that information and it would probably be about two years after tra- starting training with Eric, that I would compete in MMA because now I'd been exposed to the MMA because right. it, was, it wasn't called MMA back then. Around that, was, yeah. they were toying with the idea that MMA was UFC was still sort of like was that the era of cage fighting? Yeah, cage fighting, and it was no holds barred. There was yeah. a few shows trying to Valatuda get up. Fight, you know, yeah. I think like the the Dana White and the Fatitas would have bought the UFC, but it I was know. still like. 
20 or something like that, USC 20. Or they, it was like yeah, that, you know, that, early that era where yeah, you, yeah, they yeah, were still yeah. in a, kind of like what because US, it was here, it like in a until, little casino room. Yeah, it wasn't until, when was it? Gosh, I think it really changed when it was like, Okay, was that, Shamrock, Tito. Yeah, it was that, sort that of was era. getting bigger. That was, yeah. that was it was that, that was around that area. Bigger places, you know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then uh so I would go, right, this, this is I've got to find some MMA when I get yeah. back home. I've got to, and I remember being out with Eric and he goes, Right, what you do, man, is get your guys to do this. And I'm like, What do you mean, my guys? Hmm. What do you mean? He's with your guys, you know, he's like because I remember like I've been he out there, I'd be he training. You in school, then. And like uh, he'd go, oh, I, he'd be going off to do a seminar for the weekend, flying out somewhere, and he'd stop by the um, motel. Uh, yeah, because one time I was out there, and uh, it was like Thanksgiving. Okay. Didn't really know what. Fa Even though my mum was American, yeah. but I like, you know, she wasn't American, but her dad was American. Right. But uh, didn't really Thanksgiving. What was that? And then, uh, um, so what would happen? Uh, it knock on my door. I was staying in this like motel, this really like it was in deepest, darkest LA. It's probably there's probably some rap song about this hotel, yeah. And he'd <laughs> knock on my door, like room service. I'm like, what the, what fuck? the fuck is this? I was like, I thought, no, I thought you was having dinner with like Guru Dan. He goes, yeah, no, we've done that. Let's we uh, we go get some, we go train. I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay. So we went. I remember jumping in the car, grabbing my stuff, jumping in the car. And then uh, driving to some sort of CD shop, he bought like a CD. Like, I think it was a Rob Zombie CD. And uh, go to the academy. I think I must have some sort of problem with the dinner. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's uh, come to think about it. Now I'm reliving the memory. I, I took a bit of a whooping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it did because we did like a half hour freaking spa. Spa. Half hour yeah. sparring in the ring, and then half hour grappling, and then like he, he pulled out the power wheel, and then off we're doing all this stuff, and I'm like. What's going on here? So I mean, it's like beat the beating the snot out of me. What's going on? What, yeah, yeah. what did I do? <laughs> and then the next day, he he was flying out to go do a seminar somewhere at the weekend. Yep. He stops by. Oh, and then after we trained, he took me to see his Thanksgiving. Right? He took me. He took me to see some guys that he used to go to university with. It's all a bit bizarre. I'm not sure. I've been punching the head a lot, so maybe my memory's a bit vague. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure the guy, one of the guys that he, he his friends was a full-time Elvis impersonator. Right. right? <laughs> pretty sure. <laughs> and then we went to this bar, right? Bearing in mind I didn't drink or anything, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Went to the this this one of the smallest bars in LA. Right. Right. Because they served Boddingtons. Boddington. Yeah, they had Boddingtons on tap. Now this was an English beer, apparently. I don't know. Right. I've never yeah, it's Boddington's. It's like an English beer. I went, what? I don't know. You know, I'm like, no, what are you talking about? Yeah. I have no idea what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah. So we go there. This is back in the day when I think a Jaeger bomb was um like in beer. You had a Jaeger oh. in a in a tumbler of beer. Yeah. Oh. And I'm I'm smashed. He's got me wasted. I'm like, I don't even drink, yeah. Wow. And I'm like, and he's like, dude, do you want to stay? And I'm like, no, I don't know where the hell I am, man. And then he goes, dude, I don't, dude I, no, I'm like, I don't know where I am. Please just take me back to the hotel. So I've gone back to the hotel and I like, literally walked out the this bar in the hotel. I could see the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I, I might have done. I don't know. It might have been when I got out of the car. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I was smashed. And the next day he's, he's, uh, he's knocked on the door on his way to the airport because I was staying near the airport, right? Okay. I was still training at uh, the, Ingle, the Marina Del Rey place. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he give me the tape of the training that we done, and he give me some magazines and stuff. So from the night, from the night before, this was or this is the next day. This is the next day. He's, he's flying giving you out. The tape yeah, he's giving the me the, he's giving me the tape of our training that we've done because yeah. he videotaped it all. Nice. And nice. he put it on tape for me so I could take home yeah, yeah, yeah. And review it and, and learn it all again. And he give me the tape. I was just you know standard. This was standard practice. Give yeah. me the tape. Give me some magazines. Give me some stuff to yeah. put land in his car. Or something. I've still got half the magazines. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he'd written on one of them or something. You know, what I mean, like you know. And uh, I was like, "Cool, man. Yeah, have a good trip. See you. See you next time, man." Yeah. Boom. <sighs> Wasted. Sat down. Like uh, started going through the magazines, and there's like an envelope, like a like a, you know, an envelope, like a A4 envelope, whatever. So I opened the envelope, and I pulled out. It's like a stif certificate. I'm like, oh, "What's this?" And like coach certificate. I'm like, "Oh shit, I didn't." Oh, wow. oh, oh! I didn't expect. I didn't. This is not. I didn't go out there to become a coach, coach under yeah. Eric. I just went to learn the information. Yeah, of course. But he's giving me the certificate. I'm like, oh shit, man! Like coach level one or whatever it was back then. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, yeah. Because 
and then like what you're saying, get your guys yeah. to do stuff. And what do you mean, my guys? Well, the guys you're teaching. You teach because you'll learn more if you keep like trying to teach this to people. Yeah. You'll learn it faster. Yeah. So I'm like, right. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I got this certificate, and I was like, oh my mind, like, oh my god, this is. Yeah. Oh wow, this is Max. amazing. Yeah, and he yeah, wasn't, yeah. and he'd gone. He'd, I couldn't even say thanks. You know what I mean? I couldn't phone him. Didn't have, you know, didn't didn't like have phone, a phone back then. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. So then this is when, like, I was studying the gym instructor and PT stuff, and then I would, I'd get a little like, uh, uh, I'd, I'd raise some money, or my parents lent me some money to buy like a, um, it was like about two thousand pound, I think, at the time, like a, a shed, okay. like a workshop shed, yeah, fifteen yeah, yeah. foot by twenty foot. Yeah, yeah. Put some mats in it in the back of my garden, nice. and that would be my gym. And I, this is. I didn't really have like students. We could only because MMA. I didn't have any MMA. I was training Winston on a yeah. on a Monday still at the at the at the um, at the JKD. at the community center. Yeah. And then like found another place nearby me w w on a Wednesday night. A guy that was running that was a guy called Steve Dempsey, who was kind of in a bit of the uh, amateur MMA scene back then. Yeah. And uh, and that was it. Wow. So it's like, well, let's what train at my for, place. Yeah. So let's train at my gym, like my my house. Just come Shit. train, and yeah, we, yeah. we just roll and get get some training done, because I want to train every night, and that's how it kind of started. Right. And I trained with everybody by then, and then like. This is now what you're talking mid two thousands. Yeah, this two thousand, yeah two thousand one, two thousand two, this okay. kind of time, and then yeah. and at this time, because the only place that was near was like London Shoot Fighters, and that was still going into London. I think that was in Kilburn at the time, or somewhere in the Arches. Like London Shoot Fighters, was that. They, yeah, they were they, they were doing it because I remember going to like oh. the like there was a guy called uh, Andy Jardine in this country that were putting on like shows. Uh, I went to a show at High Wycombe Judo Center. Yeah, uh, we still you know we we do our jujitsu gradings there, and they wow. still have like a bunch of tournaments that go on there. And uh, I went to that High Wycombe Judo Center to see like Manelli and Brawl. And like I think Mark Weir fought on that. I think probably Neil McLeod wow. fought on that. Like Alex Reed was fighting back then. Wow. All those guys were fighting. Um, so it's that era, okay. So London Street Fighters had a few guys on that, you know, it's around that time. Because bear in mind, like UFC was sort of, everyone knew about it like 94, 93, you know, like that yeah, kind of, yeah. so 94 to 2000, it's still bubbling here. Yeah. So, it's but London Shoot, I just never gravitated to get there because it was just always seemed a bit of a mission for me to get there. I got to jump on a train or this and this. Yeah. So I just started doing my own little thing, and found Steve's place uh, on a Wednesday. But again, um, it was just a Wednesday. It wasn't any. He had a job. It was just mm. a bit of fun for him. So we trained at my my place, just training. Yeah. And then, uh, and then back then you had like a, um, a f the internet had started emerging, right? And we had a uh, a forum, SFUK, like Submission Fight in UK. Okay. It was a forum, like a, a group chat, like, yeah, yeah. you know, like it was, it wasn't nothing like you have to, I don't know if you still have them now, but. Like it was, MSN. It, it was, like MSN. Yeah, it was like a, it was just like a live yeah. email thing, yeah. And you could just chat away like a WhatsApp type of thing now. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, and yeah. then a couple of guys were saying they were training like on a Sunday in Slough, which was like, again, a couple of towns on, 20 minutes away. So we go, oh, cool. These guys are like training, like they're grappling. Yeah, cool, man. Cool. Sweet. And I think by this time, I'd think when I was training with Steve, what would happen? Cage Rage was starting. They had a couple of shows, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Cage Rage and Cage Warriors. Okay. Right? And what would happen? I was saying, I'd been training two years now okay. with Eric Say. Yeah. And I wanted to compete. I wanted to test what I what you learned. did was out. Because in the, in the gym, I was doing all right, you know? Yeah. So there was a, Steve managed to get a, some guys, some fights, you know, they were fighting on, I think they might have fought on Cage Wars. I think we went there, York Halls. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then uh, he managed to get me a fight. And what was going to happen, the the ITV or the Channel 4, something like this, was going to be doing a documentary on cage fighting with wow. David Donald, right? And they wanted some guys that were going to be debuting right. to, to, uh, to follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, yeah, cool, I'll do that. Let's do it. Yeah. And then, uh, but my fight fell out. Ah. So Dave rung me. Oh, yeah, sorry, mate. Your Apparently your right. your fight's fall, falling out. I said, he goes, but I tell you what, he said, just because it was it was like I don't know, three or four weeks. Wasn't yeah. too bad. He goes, I tell you what, 
if you want, I'll keep you as a sort of reserve. So if anyone else falls out, you Boom. you can slide in. I went, yeah, that sounds fair. This is before the days of before, like cutting work. No, this is, this is my. Oh, okay. I haven't even thought, right? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. You, know. you don't know what the fuck's going. So goes, like, worst case, he says, you can just come, bring a couple of mates, you can watch the show, see what it's all about. Yeah. I went, yeah, sweet, yeah, no problem. Let's do it, yeah. So um, it was at the York Halls in Bethnal Green. Yeah. We, we've a couple of my mates went up. Me and a couple of mates just went up to watch the show. We got there a bit early because he said, come a bit early Simon. just in case, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. see what we do, you know. And uh, I went, all right, cool, cool. So I got there sort of, you know, shows at seven o'clock or whatever. I got there, I don't know, four o'clock. Right. Oh, yeah, we've had a pull out. Right. Like, oh, Fuck. okay. Um, Fuck. Right, let's do it. He goes, yeah, we're just waiting on the fella's coach to come because he's saying that he's a bit sick and he wants to, to, to know if his coach will let him fight. And the other guy's there, hey, this ain't cool, man. Oh, all right, well, I'm like, all right, well, I'll go get some food. Yeah. I don't think I even weighed in, you know. I'll, I'll go get some food and uh, I'll come back in a bit and you let me know, yeah? All right, cool. So I see the geezer. Um, I, think it, I think from memory... It was one of Rob Locke's guys who was the eel guy. Salbridge, yeah. yeah. The the sick guy. And he was like skinhead, tattoos, mean looking, yeah. And the other guy was like, saw me and thought, sweet, and campaigned for me to get the fight. Ah, it's not fair, mate. He's saying he is or he isn't. He's, he's in or out. If you're saying you'll do it, I'll just fight you. Yeah, yeah, like I'll tell him. easy ride, right? He goes, who's this little fella, yeah? Let's do it. Because this was at, like, welterweight. You right? welterweight? Yeah, I was, I, well, but, but, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. welterweight, 74 kilo, I have probably weighed, and it was like, the limit was 77. Well, I'm 74, so that makes me a welterweight, yeah, Fair. perfect. So I come back, and, like, Rob's there. I didn't know Rob at the time. And he's sort of, yeah, he's really sick, this guy, he can't fight. All right, Dave, you're going to fight. Yeah, David Donald said to me, yeah, you fight. And I went, all right, cool. So I'm warming up back in, you know, at the at the um, York Halls. Did you take your kit and everything with you? Yeah, I had just oh, my gloves and stuff, you know, my shorts. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I think I did like, you know, you know, classic black spandex. Nice. So nice. I've gone out. I, I end up, I, I end up arm buying the guy in like the the first round or something like. Ah, uh, uh, nice. It's first, yeah, first round so, of arm buy. So yeah, cool. You've won. I've got hundred quid. And it's like, whoa, this is <laughs> hey, big spender. It's like that was it. That was Cage Rage. I think it was Cage Rage Free. Wow. Yeah, free. Your calls. And that was in the cage that um it was uh probably sort of a twenty four foot cage sort of size, but the fence was um steel. It wasn't fence like oh, wire, okay. it was yeah, steel. Still. So when you hit into it. Yeah, it was like you know, like a, a you know, it was it, yeah, it's, people it's, People like from who were trying to get these made, they're like from construction sites or something, and so it was like, right, we can put this on it. So instead of it being net, wire fence, it, it was like that. It was yeah, you know, steel. Proper. Bit weird, because I remember fighting in a cage like that. That was the Red Cage Warriors cage at the time, and then they had another cage that they had at Wembley, which was like a cargo net, not wire. It's all yeah. They there was quite a lot of experimenting going on. But yeah, that was Cage Rage three, I think. That was my first fight. And then uh and that was it. That's what started it. So oh, this is cool. That was really that was good fun. Nice. You know what I mean? Nice. And uh, uh and what is cool today, this the guy that I fought is now he's like a black belt jiu jitsu now, still training. Nice. So that was that's cool to he's see. Still in contact. Um so uh and that that was it. That was the that was it. Nice. I did another I think my second fight. Uh I think my second fight uh, I lost, but it was, I'm not sure, it wasn't, it was, I think they, when they moved to Streatham at the nightclub, I fought there and I fought like a guy, Dave Elliott. And uh, at the time, I think he was a, I think he was a black belt at Jiu-Jitsu at the time. Nice. It's very rare, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think he was a black, was, I think he was a black belt under like, um, oh, back then who was one of the first black belts here? It was like, Gomez, wasn't it? yeah, who was, who was the, no, there was Bradley wasn't here because this is the oh, time. Not, this oh, is the time before, when right? it was like, I think uh, I remember training with Rick Young, for instance, yeah. in, and he was a brown belt jujitsu. Yeah. So it was around this kind of time. So this is like two thousand three. Yeah, that about on you then was Mauricio Gomez. Yeah, I'm not sure he was here full time. I think maybe Roger and that was here full time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Dave Elliott. I forget who. Um, Carlos Lamar. Nah. Marcus Boris. I tell you what. 
I think it was a it was a stadium with Mark Walder. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it was a stadium with Mark. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, and they'll go, oh yeah, it's a go. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. <laughs> as you do. He, as you do. He he try he gave me the 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 love for the triangle because he triangled me like in the first round, and uh, boom, just like dude, I gotta get my stuff. I gotta get my shit together because. This, yeah, man. This guy's decent. I gotta, you know, I gotta get better. Yeah. So then, boom, I train more, you know, get more into it. And then this is when I would go on to like my, I would be working now in a gym. I take, I take a job that I actually wanted, mm -hmm. and it, and it was good because it, it, it matched what I was doing outside yeah. of work. Yeah. The two things started to Interlink. merge. Yeah. And I would go to now study with a with a, uh, um, like an institute in, in San Diego. I'd study here when they would come. Uh, called the Czech Institute, which um, a guy, a guy, crazy a Canadian guy, Paul Czech, um, still now you can look him at his life. The guy's nuts. The guy yeah. can like, you know, he's, uh, he, you know, he could study out of, of helicopter to apart and together again. He's like, his, wow. his knowledge is almost like the guru. He's like the inner Santa of the fitness or health world. Wow. I don't, I, I try to separate I try to separate the worlds of fitness and health because I think again, a good saying, a, a doctor friend of mine um, reiterated to me um, yeah. recently is fit. Fit doesn't necessarily mean healthy. 100%. You could be very fit, but had, you're not we healthy. Had, we had this conversation um, we had on, on, a, on a podcast last uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I was saying that down to nutrition, down to health, down to down to fitness. And it's important that the people out there that listen as well that it, they're all separate. They're all separate. Yeah. You've got to make sure that if you if you want to get fit, you got to be make sure you're fueling your body right. Yeah, and the thing is, that it is all separate, but it's it's all linked, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like you yeah, can, yeah. You, you separate it. It's like anything. It's like it's like training my, like mixed martial arts. You're yeah. boxing, you're wrestling, you jujitsu, but then when you fight, all interlinked. Yeah, it's interlinked. You have to, you have to put it all together. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, a lot of people get fitness confused with uh, with being healthy. Yeah, and you can be healthy and also you won't have any fitness. Yeah. So it, it's a they're two different they are two different lanes, but they will they merge. They it's not like they go like this the whole time. They run parallel together. Yeah. They they're like this. They cross always, over always. all the time. It's like for me, I was when I was competing, like like a lot of guys, like they you know. Have a go at me for like eating a double deck or saying, dude, you never used to eat a double deck. What are you doing? Oh my yeah, God. What are you doing? Because when I compete, I said, different now, I'm older. I don't compete. When I competed mm. and when I was heavy study uh, with the Czech Institute, uh, I mean, I spent a lot of money learning this stuff. It wasn't like yeah. I just grabbed the information and, and, and that was it. I went, I didn't just get hearsay information. I went and Studied it, studied it, studied yeah. it properly. Like I'd spent thousands of pounds on study, you know, whether that's just traveling to America and back, or you know, renting a VHS, yeah, yeah, yeah. buying a DVD, or taking a course, you know, like studying. Like I go, I had to do like for the Czech Institute, for instance, I would go to do their like, I don't know, their their week long course up in Eastbourne, say, I think at the time. Monday to Friday, nine till five course yeah. with obviously, you know, homework every day to case yeah. studies to yeah. do. Like it's a week long course to do that course. I had to do like three other home study courses like that were three, 400 pound each to get on that course. You know what I mean? So the knowledge to get in yeah. was a lot and I spent a lot of money doing it. So cause I spent that money and learned the stuff I was, implementing that in my day-to-day -day yeah. living and, and now i was fighting in, in the mma scene i wanted to become an athlete so i needed to learn as much well, as when i was learning like you know the fact that you know, i got lift yeah, yeah. got to lift weights and stuff i need to there's this other aspect of eating correctly and knowing how your body metabolizes did you understand the, did, you, did you understand but around this time did you understand the concepts of now that you're getting in MMA, you've got to focus on which weight category you're going to fit. Yes, this is so when this it is started. Where, yeah, so this I'd had my first few fights at like, welterweight. you know, welterweight, and then I'd fight at lightweight, and then I'd yeah. fight at featherweight. So, but as I, I said to some of my guys the other day, I never really fought at those weights. I fought at the same weight every fight. 
when I was a welterweight, I would walk into the cage about 74 kilo, right? I think there was one fight I was saying to them that I thought I put some weight on, but I think it's just because my ear blew up and I, I, I got it <laughs> drained. Funny. I got yeah, it yeah. drained the day before and I was oh. weighed in the next day at 74 kilos with my clothes on. Wow. And probably holding my lunch. Yeah. And then... And your wallet. Yeah. It, <laughs> and then... Then it started again, what's this weight cutting they're doing? So then learning about that, yeah. experimenting with how to do it and what, you know, when to do it and People stuff. People don't like. realize that's another game in itself. That's a whole, yeah, I mean... Uh, that's a whole different, and and what you're gonna understand is like you come to my gym now, you want to fight. I we got blueprint, boom. This is how you do it. The, all right, not everyone's the same with nutrition and with yeah uh, uh, anything. Tying your shoes to you know fighting. Everyone's gonna have a little bit of a different way of doing it. Yeah. But this is the blueprint, and then these. So if this one doesn't fit, then this one might. This one we tweak some of this to some of that. Yeah. So you, it's on a. Again, it's uh, we've done the hard work. Yeah. Whereas me, I remember, man, I remember sitting in the in in, in the gym in California, and uh, Melvin Gillard sitting next to me on the bike. Hey, dude, how much you got to go? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, like one and a half pounds. And he's like, oh my god. I said, how much you got? He goes, twenty. I'm like, what? Fuck it, man. I'm yeah. Like, oh my God. Like the day of the weigh in when I fought uh, in the UFC, I'm freaking lunch, breakfast in the morning, you yeah. know, weigh ins at four. I went and hit sauna. For it's like, still it. didn't, it wasn't anything. I just had to diet a little bit. It wasn't until I got out of the UFC and I went, actually, I need to really look at Not what these guys now. are doing because I had no, I had no place being in the UFC. You know but is mean? that right to say? Because obviously, yes, you had Eric. Yes, you had Winston as your mentors and, and leaders. Yeah. As a, as okay, so my, my third, but my third, God. what would happen is I'd end up on the SFUK. All these couple of guys are doing this little grappling thing on a Sunday. Yeah. We went in out of squash court, throwing the mats down and getting on with it. Mm. So we would be doing that and that'd be cool. And it was a guy, the, the, there's one guy, Canadian guy, Dan, Canadian, I don't know what his last name was, okay, just but it's Canadian Dan. Canadian Dan, yeah. And then uh, the other guy was Andy, Andy Sledge who would go on to be like referee, judge, announcer yeah, yeah. in the MMA scene here, here in the UK and uh, recently retired as a referee. And uh, he would be the one to organize this little get together. And then because I trained with Eric and I'd probably, I think I'd fought maybe once okay. by this time or twice. Oh, why didn't you? You, t you could take the class. I went, dude, this is really, nice. this is really like, my bit of training. I already teach a bunch of guys in my in my shed. Yeah. So I'd, I'd rather this be like my bit of training because I'm I'm training. I want to fight and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. so he goes oh, okay. So he ended up getting a guy called Ronaldo Campos in, and at the time Ronaldo was um, over here from Brazil studying. Like he was on a I don't know like a, a study visa or something yeah. like this. Uh, and at the time he was a brown belt under who would then become my third mentor, uh, which would be uh, Zay Marcello, my, my jiu-jitsu coach oh, okay. or my jiu-jitsu professor. Um, and what would happen is I would, they would come down, him and another guy, Eduardo, yeah. would come down on a Sunday and show some Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I'm like, oh, this uh -huh. is cool. And introduce us to that. I'm like, cool. And then they want, oh, let's do the gi, let's do the gi. I'm like, oh. What's this? I oh, do the gi, man. I got out the gi. I do karate, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you associate so it reluctant, with yeah, yeah, reluctantly yeah. bought the gi and yeah, got on yeah, with yeah. it. And and at the time, you know, like um, guys would they they would be going up to Milton Keynes to train and training in London Bridge and wow. going all around the place. And like guys like Danny Batten. This is how I get used to introduce to guys like Danny Batten, like former. Uh, um, Cage Warriors champion and stuff yeah. and I'd go train with Danny a lot because up in Milton Keynes we would go there um, and then what happened is is Ronaldo and, uh, and uh, Eduardo would like Ronaldo would leave mm. forget where he left I don't think he went back to Brazil he went because he now lives in America um, and then Eduardo uh, would would carry on teaching and then but he was sort of like trying to teach Slough once a week and then in London and in Milton Keynes. I'm yeah. not sure if he was in Milton Keynes or whatever, but but then Zay would come through uh, to do a seminar 
2005 maybe that kind right. of time on his way into Europe because he had some like yeah. affiliates or some friends of his in Europe that he would go like teach in France and Belgium and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so he would stop by England and, and do some seminars. I would sometimes miss the seminar because I'd either be fighting or traveling, train with Eric, yeah, I'd be yeah. away. I remember one time I'd miss the gradings each time because of just timings. Yeah. And, uh, and I was training in London Bridge and at the seminar and he's going, oh, are you you're gonna come to, the, you, you're at the grading next week, yeah? Grading next week. I went, oh no, I'm, 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 in, I'm in America next week. I'm training out in America. Oh, right, okay. Okay, uh, come to Milton Keynes tonight then. I went, yeah, but I'm leaving to go to America tomorrow. So, because what I used to do is go train, like I go to train with Eric. Yep. And then my 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 folks, uh, my 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 girlfriend would go to stay with my uh, aunt in Florida. So I'd go train with Eric and then That'd go meet him. In get Florida. In, yeah, get internal oh. flight and go meet him in Florida and then like have a holiday. Have a bit of a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, this time Eric was we messed up the schedule and I couldn't go train with Eric. I was going just to Florida for right. like a two week holiday or whatever. I was like, oh, it's just gonna be a bit boring. And I'm missing the seminar. I'm missing the grading. Missing for the God's grading. sake! Yeah, 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 yeah. So he goes, come, seven, come, come tonight, Milton Keynes. Like, I'm going tomorrow. Man. Oh, I come, I come, I come. I go home, pack now. And so, yeah. London Bridge in the morning. Bam. Went home, packed. Milton Keynes in the evening, and uh, uh, we're training. He goes, right, because you're going to miss the grading. We've missed. You've missed it a couple of times already. Here's your blue belt. So I'm like, oh, cool, blue belt jujitsu, sweet. All right, great. And then I would go to Florida. Yep. And uh, he goes, oh, where are you going anyway? Where are you going? Because I'm going to Florida. He goes, oh, you should go train with my friend, Laborio. He's in Florida. Oh, I'm like, okay, whereabouts? He's in Florida. I went, yeah, Florida's pretty big, man. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, not, it's, fit, not, it's not like <laughs> Coventry. Yeah, you can fit England like five times in yeah, Florida, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. And then turns out I get to Florida and because uh, um, one, I'm on a forum for the Czech Institute asking people where I can go get stuff to eat. Yeah. Because my my aunt at the time they were just you know microwave a coffee and stuff they didn't no. they didn't know, oh. and uh, um, so yeah so like they directed me to like a Whole Foods like thirty minutes away from where my aunt lived and then I get he goes yeah I said where where are they he goes American Top Team they're in Florida I'm like all right so I get to and I try to look them up on the internet couldn't that night couldn't find nothing so I then get to Florida and my my like my uncle, I say, he's looking in the yellow pages, finds it, and it turns out it's like 10 minutes away. It's, ah. it's like amazing. So I'd get up every morning and go there. Sweet. And no, at a time, it was when they just got this big place. Yeah. Like, uh, not the place they're in now, but the place they're in before. And no one trained in the gi. It was a weird good. place. It was like, not weird, but no one trained in the gi. And I'd get there, and I'd put the gi on and then there was a guy there, Renato Tavernes, and he loved me because I had a gi. He goes, yeah, bring your gi, bring your gi. So I ended up training with this guy who's like, uh, you know, world champion, black belt. I, I didn't really know jujitsu. You didn't understand it back then? I wasn't, you know, the, the first ever jujitsu class I've ever done formally was yeah. uh, was a Machado class at the Inner Santo Academy, but Eric took it because the guy couldn't turn up. And it, and it was like a, it was a, like, it was a no gi class anyway. So I'd never trained in the gi. Yeah, yeah, properly. Yeah. Until like we started a little bit part time, and then Zay would be coming in and out of yeah, the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like a, you know, Consi yeah. consistent. It was like a little side project. It makes sense. So I learned I was training all the time. I was there for a few weeks, and it's like, oh, this is really cool. And it, it, what was really cool is I turned up with like my Zay Marcelo T-shirt on, and they go, "Hey, Zay Marcelo, yeah, cool." Yeah. And this is when I realised that Zay is quite like known within the jiu-jitsu jiu world. Yeah. And respected as well, you know. Yeah, so was, like, that was pretty cool. So now I'm like, I got my jujitsu going on with Zay, and then what would happen? Maybe Zay would send over Zanginio, uh when I was a blue belt, who would stay, who'd come and live here because Eduardo had gone back yeah. to Brazil or something happened with those guys. So then he sent um, Zanginio over to stay up in Milton Keynes. Yeah. And then Zanginio would be like the full time. Right, we're gonna do this serious now. Bam. Let's this go. this many times a week. Boom, 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 boom. And then following that, um, Zay would come over maybe a year later to live, and then Zay would now be the the guy. So the, the it was head. around my blue was, belt time. Zanjini at the time, professor black belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zanjini yeah. had been a black belt probably I don't know ten years. Wow. 
Like Zang Zinho now is probably like a fourth degree black belt. Yeah, he's been a black he, where belt. Where is he now? Dubai. He's in Portugal. Portugal. Ah. Yeah, he's in Portugal now. Um, but yeah, so Zay would come over and stay. So um, I never really the first I never done any. Although I knew grappling, I knew grappling. It's kind of weird because I'd always get um, uh, I'd always get criticized from Eric for being too jujitsu, and I'd always get criticized from Zay for being too aggressive. Like too like flashy or too, like too, too, yeah, wait, 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 stay in mount, stay in mount, stay in side control, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, get points. Yeah. Whereas, like, yeah. say, you'd be yeah. like, dude, you're going but to the But that's, that's, where the, that's where the two different sports come into place, right? Right. So, because it's two different games you play. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's cool, you know? Yeah. But I'd never, the, I've only ever really, I didn't, I didn't do it. So I considered, like, like Eric would always ask me about my jiu jitsu. I'm like, yeah, cool. And he'd always ask me, oh, when, you, what belt you want? I'm like, dude, I'm, I really want to get my white belt. And I remember having a conversation with him in the car out in LA. And I was like, I really want to get my white belt. I, I, I'm, I'm like, I was a purple belt. Because when I was a, uh, I got I, my fights in the UFC, I got, I was a purple belt in Jiu Jitsu. How many fights in the UFC did you have? I, what had, you I only had two. This was like uh, 2006. 2006. So I, my fifth or sixth <laughs> fight was in the UFC. So this is like, what you understand night, is- I, rem I remember the night you made your debut in the UFC in 2006, because it was the night, did you know Eric was in the country? Yeah, he couldn't corner me, because he yeah. was here. He was in Bournemouth. Yeah. Because that was basically, you know what you did years before that, where you were following him wherever yeah. he went? At that time, that's exactly so what I was doing. So in 2005 and six, I when he, when he came in 2005, I followed him. When he came in 2006, I followed yeah. him. And in 2006, I remember, being in Bournemouth at Phil Norman's, uh, yeah, but yeah. he didn't, it wasn't at the academy, it was in at the sports Bulldogs. hall. Oh, okay, yeah. It was in a, like a sports hall, he did the seminar, right? Um, and I remember then, like everyone just like, everyone stopped training for a second, ah, Dave, Dave should be on now. And this is like the time when it wasn't like <laughs> Google or, or, or yeah. what, it, what what we've got now, it wasn't like you could Twitter just Twitter and find out. It's like, and then the attorney was there and she was like, have you found out, have you found out yet? Have you found out? And it's just constantly, we were focusing well, what, on what center, happened with me? But, but and Eric, I remember Eric. He delivered an awesome seminar, like he always is. But I know his mind was on wanting to be. In oh, that's cool! Of, I never knew this. Yeah, so he was. He was. Eric was in the country at the time, and I, everyone, I didn't know you. I, I don't think I, I hadn't yeah, met you. Met, no. So I was like, Who, "Who's this Dave? Who's this dude? Who's, the, who's this Dave Lee guy, man? Like Dave Lee, man." Sounds like, like. Well, that's the thing. Back it's then, like, it's you, it, it, like you, I can look up any fighter that's just yeah. fought this weekend. I can look them up. On anything. anyone, as soon as like you can just look them up, but, yeah, but back, back then, then it wasn't that you, easy. you had, I think, sure dog, but again, sure dog, yeah, that was, just, sure dog, uh, that was just a database, yeah. to see how many fights you've had, and that was it, and that was it. I think YouTube was there, but it Not was as big, it, it was what's this, this YouTube yeah. ain't gonna be a thing, yeah, you know, what I mean, it wasn't because my what it is now, yeah, 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 and uh, you know, how did you? How did you even, you might have known someone who was a yeah. bit of a techie that knew how to upload a video on YouTube, but it wasn't, you had to have a computer and, you know, you, it wasn't yeah. as it was. You had to get on a computer. Your phone didn't have that capability. No. Nah. Nah. So. So your, your debut in 2000. So what happened was I would, I would fight in, uh, in uh, Cage Rage and what yeah. would happen, I would fight uh, uh, a guy, Jason, uh, Jason Barrett, I would fight this guy, man, hilarious. <laughs> he was like a, like a preacher. Oh wow, dude is massive black guy. He was like, looks frightening. Yeah, hilarious, really cool guy, funny guy. Yeah. I remember him doing a uh, uh, um, when when Dave O'Donnell did a thing on Men and Motors or something. Some channel they did like a couch show. Ah, okay. Like you go on and be an interviewer here. Yeah? Like, right, right, yeah, right. Probably like a TV podcast, like what we're doing, but right, but on telly because yeah, yeah, you yeah. didn't have podcasts back then, right? Yeah. And I remember him going there, going. Uh, Cause he looked the part, you know what I mean? And he goes, and he, they were telling me he was a Thai boxer, and everyone go, oh, "Man, he's a big Thai, Thai boxer." Like, well, if he was any good at Thai boxing, he wouldn't be doing this, would he? Yeah, you know of, course, I mean? of course. And then, uh, um, but I walked up, and this is this is at welterweight. Yeah. And uh, and he was massive, and I'm like, oh my god, I weighed in like with me, seventy four with me dinner and stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, dude's massive. And even he says, he goes, uh, I'll never forget it's for late hey, yeah. I'll have to try and see if I can find it. But he goes, uh, oh, I remember, he goes, they said to him, oh, you, what happened with your debut, Jason? It didn't go that well, did it? He goes, well, you and, he goes, Dave, Dave and Andy Gear at the time, he goes, Dave and Andy called me, he said, and uh, 
they give me this, they, you know, you want to fight? And they go, yeah, yeah. They give me this guy, Dave Lee, 12 stone dripping wet, he says. He looked like one of the kids I used to nick their dinner money off at school. This is what he said. And I'm like, and he goes, and we got out there and he goes, and I give him, I kicked him in the leg and I see him wince. And I thought, yeah, there's loads more of that. Where'd that come from? He said, and I knew he was scared. And then he said, uh, and he goes, and then he grabbed hold of me <laughs> and put me on the ground. And I felt like I was drowning. <laughs> like, uh, oh, mate, it was hilarious. No. <laughs> really funny. Really funny. And, uh, but I remember that fight yeah. and, uh, uh, and what happened? Here's, here's, here's uh, <laughs> yeah, here's like cousin or something like that was there watching and yeah. and his cousin didn't fight or anything, but really like, um, liked the, the stuff that was going on and he wanted to be a manager. I think he tried to manage Paul Daly at the time and oh, wow. he managed some guys, you know what I mean? And, uh, and he wanted to manage me. And I kind of got fights myself, you know, David called me, oh, this geezer says he wanted to fight you. Do you want to fight him? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, he, did, he said what? Yeah. Right? And I managed it. What's a manager? Why is one of them? Yeah. Why do you need a manager? You know? And I goes, well, listen, mate. I said, if you want to be my manager, that's great. I said, but if you can get me a fight, then then we'd, no. we'll have a chat about it. Yeah, no problem. All right, all right. And then, so that would be, I think, did he get me? I'm not sure if he got me any, but maybe I sort of, no, I think I arranged my own fight on the next one with, with Dave. Uh, O'Donnell on Cage Rage, like the Contender Show or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this would be instead of it being at Wembley uh, Conference Centre, that was getting pulled down. Okay. So they moved back to like the nightclub, and I was fighting a guy called uh, Dennis Kelly, which is hilarious, right? Because okay. Dennis Kelly now is uh, has a thriving gym in Australia, and trains under Eric, right? Wow. He's on Eric's program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he part is, of the, yeah. he's part of the gang. Yep. Right. And uh, it was hilarious because Dave called me. David Donald, oh, um, I've got a fight for you. It's, it's Dennis Kelly. I went, yeah, I went, I went that's funny. I'm, I'm seeing him tomorrow. Because he came to a seminar with Eric okay. um, when, that I put on in Slough, a little seminar that like, right. hardly anyone come to. It probably cost me a bit of money. Okay. But uh, he came to that. I remember him calling me. He, from, I think he was from London. And then I did another seminar with James and okay. Matt at their place with right. Eric. And he come to that. And uh, I remember, because he goes, uh, Dave goes to me, oh yeah, Dennis Kelly, well, it's funny, I'll see him tomorrow. And it's hilarious. I said, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll. Cause I never took anything like that it's personally. Yeah, no, no, no. You know, it's, it's like Eric, Eric goes, why are you two fighting? You know, you, 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 I'm like, it's not, it's not like I'm mugging him. It's, this is just competition. It's just one competition. It's like it never gets me when two guys from the same team, I've had it at jujitsu comps. Yeah. And I go, well, just fight. Oh no, no, we're the same team. I went, well, which one of you wants the gold medal? Yeah. There you go. Who fight. doesn't want to fight? Well, you then you get silver. No, no, no. I said, well, then fight. No problem. It's not like you're, you're not a fight fight, is it? It's yeah, competition. Yeah, it's a comp. So anyway, it's just a test. And what was happening? I picked James up from his house and yeah. we're driving to the academy. And Dennis has just got off the train and is walking oh. down the street. So I've pulled in. Yo, Dennis, get in. Oh, yeah, cool. So off we go. And I'm, I remember looking at my rear view. I go, Dennis, what's this? You want to fight me? <laughs> he went, uh... No, Dave called me. I'm like, yeah, it's cool, man. I'm, yeah. I'm down. I'm down. I'm cool. And I remember the seminar. We were at the seminar, and we, you know, we're doing the seminar. He's kind of, yeah. he's over there. I'm over here, and uh, we're gonna do some sparring, do some rolling. And he come up to me and goes, "Oh, probably best that we don't spar." I went, ah. "Yeah, cool, man. No problem." And I had my video camera there, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, filming the filming the seminar. And he rolled with James. Okay. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I'm yeah. filming. Filming him rolling with James, yeah, yeah, and James is like looked like he had trouble with him. I'm like, oh god, if James is having trouble with him, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get bashed. Because <laughs> James used to beat the shit out of me, right? <laughs> so I'm like, oh my god, he's really having James is, yeah, James is having a bit of a bother with him, man. Oh no, oh shit, Fuck. yeah. I'm like, oh, this is bad, man. Okay, well, well you know, I've agreed it now. Well, yeah. well. so I end up fighting Dennis, and um, and he was from like Carlson Gracie gym at the time, right? Like. Uh, Simon Hayes was cornering him and all that, and they comes, Carlson, great C. And James is cornering me, he goes, fuck them, man, Just don't worry about them. Eric Paulson, that's us, man, let's don't yeah, worry about yeah, it. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, all right. So I come out, 
And uh, I end up, I end up like winning the fight, triangling him in in, in the first round. And I was wow. like, oh my god, that was like, whew, because I thought he was going to bash me. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? I really, after seeing after seeing the footage, with after it, seeing yeah. James struggle with him, I was like, oh my god. So that was happy. And then I think around that time, that this this uh, Jason Barrett, the one um, that wants to manage, yeah? manager guy, just called me. I've got a fight for you. Nice. Oh, and yeah, cool. What is it? He goes, it's UFC, mate. You want to do it? I'm like, what? He went, yeah, I got your fight in the UFC. I went, no way, bro. And I, I would laugh myself to sleep at night. I went, how did you manage that? Yeah. Right? How how did he manage that? I don't know. I'd have to try and get hold of him again and ask him the ins and outs of it. I'd be interested to know. But I think what happened at the time, like you saying, like one of the first yeah. English guys, um, what happened? So you'd already, you already, you already had like, uh, Ian Freeman fight. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be the number first, the first yeah. guy, number one. Was gone. Yeah, I was about I to ask you about Mark Weir as well. Yeah, so number Mark. one was 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 Mark uh, was uh, Ian, Ian Freeman. Freeman. Yeah, he'd gone out in it. Then they had like the Royal Albert Hall, ball in the hall one. Yeah, I forget when that was, but like but they had that, and then you had so you've had you had like uh, Mark Weir fought on that show. Mm -hmm. Uh, Quickest knockout as well, wasn't it? Yeah, time, yeah at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Lee Remedius fought on that show. He fought, I think he fought Genki Suda. Yes. Because Lee Remedius come to the uh, Eric's seminar oh, at wow. Bob's new, second place had in ha uh, in uh, Hoxton, like a week before the fight. Wow. And and we they were talking about it. I said, good fight. And like Lee was like, yeah, yeah for him. He goes, no, no, for us, it's going to be great. And then, uh, so he would fight on the show, Lee Remedius. And then... Uh, I think James Zickage fought on that show. Pretty sure he fought on that show. And then uh, who else fought on that show? There might have been one more English guy. Maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe. But I think mm. James, and uh, from then, so it would be Mark Weir uh, Ian fought. Fre Ian Freeman fought in America. In, okay. Mark okay. Weir went out, fought in America. And I think James Zickage went out and, and fought, fought in, in America. And I think... Between those times, I think, uh, uh, um, why am I forgetting his name? Who got arrested? Why am I forgetting his name? Yeah, he got arrested for doing the bank robbery or the oh, robbery. Yeah. Why am I forgetting his name? Lee Murray. Yes. So Lee Murray would go on and fight in America, right? And the and, and, and UFC and win. So I think Ian Freeman, Mark Weir, Lee Remedius, James Zickage, Lee Murray, I believe... Uh, I was like number six to fight in the UFC, UFC, but maybe number four. So Ian Freeman, Lee Murray, Mark Weir, James Zickage, maybe number five to actually fight in the UFC in America. Wow. Because obviously the other guys fought in, in the, Albert yeah, Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was in the, you know, I was in the first 10 guys at least nice. from my memory. Yeah. So the way I can only attribute that is is because they they had the Ultimate Fighter and uh, Michael because Michael Bisping hadn't fought in UFC he'd uh, won the Ultimate Fighter but he hadn't time. actually fought in the UFC by this I mean, time he'd yeah. he'd won the Ultimate Fighter that was two thousand six yeah one, because that was the big era of Tito and Shamrock yeah Ken Shamrock so um, yeah so they were looking so now Bisping had put England on the radar yes. They'd now look in, oh, oh, there might be some more guys from England. And I think maybe that's how I got massaged in uh, to uh, right, to fight. Right. They needed someone. And they 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 sent me um the opponent sent me like I had to go get visa. It's cool, man. I was I went up to yeah. American Embassy to get my visa and they go, Oh, you get fighting UFC. Oh my god, yes, yeah, it's yeah. pretty good. So I uh, had my free fight contract to go up yeah, there, yeah. get my visa. Which is cool. I still had the passport with like Zufa, like Zufa, Zufa yeah, on my yeah. pass on my visa, and uh, and I used to laugh myself to sleep every night, thinking, awesome. why am I fighting? There's so many people that deserve this bet more than me. Why am I getting? This is hilarious, right? Yeah. So my opponent was Tyson Griffin, which again, who's this Tyson guy? Gr yeah. Who's this guy? Yeah. At the time, yeah. So yeah, sure, dog. Yeah, All yeah. I knew, Tyson Griffin. I knew his what his face looked like. Uh, I think I see one fight of his on King of the Cage. Okay. I think he'd, I see the fight of him fighting Dwayne Ludwig. So he's eight and oh, right? Which again, back then, whatever. Yeah. It's like, it's my fifth, sixth fight, right? I still yeah. have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. He was eight and oh, and he just beat Uriah Faber and uh, Dwayne Ludwig, right? Wow. 
So I used to go, I used to go, I think maybe when I used to go to bed laughing, it was more of a nervous laugh than yeah, yeah, like yeah, a comedy yeah. laugh. But I used to just go to bed laughing. Yeah. I still didn't have anywhere to train. I was, this is my training. Are you still I in would, the shed? I, I was still in the shed. I was still training like Winston in, in uh, uh, once a week in the community center. Yes. I trained my shed every other day, I, every day I could. Yep. And I would drive to uh, Matt and James's place up in Loughton, which was like an hour and a half away from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would drive up to Milton Keynes, which again was an hour and a half away from me, to do my training. Yeah. In around working at the gym. So I still didn't have it. Still, that's what I mean. I was laughing myself all the time, and I, and then I, um, I remember James calling me because I remember getting the fight. Yeah. And I remember, I remember getting hold of Mark Weir, calling him. He'd been out of the UFC by now, but he fought there. Yeah. I called Mark Weir. I went, "Oh, is this Mark Weir?" Goes, yeah, yeah. I said, "Mate, I don't. You don't know me, but I've got a fight in the UFC. These medicals. What? What? What's the situation with that? I've got to pay for all these medicals. Oh yeah, yeah. They don't pay for them. You got to pay for them." So I had to like go get an eye test, 150 quid, oh, no. you know. I was in America and I was training because James called me, dude, if because he was going to fight uh, at the Wembley Arena on Cage Rage. Okay. Well, we need to go out to California. I've looked at the I've looked at the flights. Let's book them. Yeah. I went, all right, let's go. So we would go out and that was a great, that was a great, out of all of it, that, that was, was the, the great thing that came out of it because we was in a room, man. This is when uh, Eric had the gym, like the shop, with the Wicked. camouflage and wall, you know? This is when uh, the, the era of... This is when, when Josh was getting ready Josh, to fight in the yeah. and Pride and stuff. Yeah, so that, that was that was the era of Josh. Uh, you had Cobb, you had yeah. Shun you yeah. had all these yeah. superstars. Yeah. So we was in a room with, with those guys. We was in, wow. I remember being... I remember... Uh, wow. I doubt Cub Swanson would remember, but a, I had some... Talking of... Talk great rounds of Cub Swanson, man. If you go onto YouTube now and you type in CSW Pro Spar in 2000 or nine there's this is when I was out there and there's a there's a few rounds of basically Cub kicking the fuck out of me yeah there was, there's, a, there's a few because he was he was fighting uh, I think he'd been suspended or something right he was fighting on King of the Cage uh, and he was he'd been suspended of, or something or he was but he got another fight or he got suspended for fighting on like an Indian reservation uh, show Right. Which was against protocol or something like this. Remember him saying. But at that time, because I rocked up, some like green dude from fucking UK. Yeah. And I'm fighting on UFC. So they're like, oh, really? Who are you fighting? And then I tell them and they go, okay. They didn't believe her. Good luck or, with that. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, or probably just didn't believe me. Right. I mean, who's this dickhead? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and there was like, uh, the room, it just, from my memory, the room was packed. You know what I mean? So packed that, you know, you're, you're sitting on the side waiting for a bit of space to spar. You to know spar, what I mean? yeah. And like, I think Josh was getting ready for, uh, to fight in Pride. You had uh, James Thompson from the UK there, yeah. who was getting ready to fight in Pride. Uh, I think uh, uh, Rampage Jackson was there. I remember yeah, Rampage yeah. being asleep. Because there's that famous picture. That I, I I've still got in one of the magazines of all of them training. Yeah, they're all there, man. Yeah, and I remember there. I remember the I remember um, Rampage has been asleep on the wall. He's just really tired. Wow. And uh, so they were there, uh, like Vladimir uh, uh, Volchenkin, if I'm saying that right. Because I always remember I always remember Eric going to James because he was a bit he's bigger than me, right? He's my middleweight, and uh, he'd go, "Hey, James, get in the <laughs> ring with with uh, Vladdy. Vladdy. And he's like, "Who?" He goes, you know, the janitor. <laughs> and he's like, all right. And so he's in the ring with him, though, and I'm out with the little guys. So, so I think Mac Danzig came in for, for a couple of sessions or something like that. He just won um, maybe the ultimate fight or something. Or they, oh, wow. I don't think he'd done the ultimate fight by then, but they oh, were saying, okay. oh, he's like the king of the cage champion. Or he was, nice. he was like, nice. they pointed out, he's like, yeah, he's going to be good, you know. Did, but me and you... Cub would get some, I remember getting some really good rounds in with Cub yeah. Swanson. And Cub Swanson... At the time, he was just like, yeah, it just seemed like a quiet kid. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I really, I really want to, uh, you know, get doing this. I'm, I'm fighting on King of the Cage. Yeah, I'm just having a couple of fights. Really cool, really Proper cool time. guy. And I remember after my fight, I was at the hotel and uh, I'm sitting there all like, you know, pissed off or whatever. And uh, and he sort of mooched through, we're sitting outside in the in the garden yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know, and there's a lot of people there. It's like a 
kind of like a you know, bar or whatever, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sort of mooched through and made a point to come and see me. Oh, sorry about the fight, mate, but, you know, you know, give me a little, like, tap little on the pet. shoulder. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I remember that, and I thought, oh, well, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's cool. And he was, you know, uh, you know, he could have had a lot of, like, thought I was a complete dick because I've got, you know, you he's, yes, I'm he's somewhere where that he, he wants that to, yeah. he should have been rather yeah. than me. So, yeah, 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 of course. And now he's gone on to, you know, now look at be it. a now massive star, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Which yeah. is cool. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so for me, it was just, it was weird, you know what I mean? Yeah. Being in that, and I was fighting on a show with like, um, BJ Penn fought Matt Hughes on the show and, wow. and, that was uh, the event like that. yeah, yeah, it was, it was yeah. just crazy. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, a lot of people, I don't really talk about it a lot because it was two fights that I lost. Do you know what I mean? It's two fights that you lost, but you also learned from. Yeah. Uh, after but, you know, was, and I wouldn't after, trade the experience. There's no, no way hell, I would hell, trade the experience because it was cool. But I, like you, I think we were talking about this before the podcast, but like they're the two fights that probably, yes, you lost, but after coming out from that little wake up call, right? Yeah, completely. I mean, I wish I could, like, I mean, Zay said it to me before. Like, uh, I think it was like around the time I was a brown belt or just get my black belt or something like that. He goes, really goes, I, 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 he goes, I, I wish you was fighting the UFC now. Now. Not then. Now. Because yeah. I was a purple belt. It's like, Did I you see... ever get the op another opportunity? Or not? Like, was, there, was, it, was it down to this management, do you think it was? Or, yeah, I or, never really or, had or a manager, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I had people that I knew. And it was that only helped. to my later part of my sort of career. I don't really yeah. consider myself having a career in fighting. I just did some fights. Do you know what I mean? I don't think when I did it, it was I. There wasn't. There wasn't career. Certain people had career, but for yeah. me, again, I was just like my job. So I just fell fighting. into it. I just yeah, sort of, I took yeah. an opportunity that I saw in front of me. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. only f and for me, like going back to like students. I always I want my students to do better than me. Yeah. Because otherwise, it doesn't grow. It's true. So like now, I have guys that are. Uh, competing on some of the best shows in the world and not just yeah. competing as a like a, as a you know I give it a go there I got guys now it's yeah, their career I got guys coming like, don't get me wrong I've had guys coming to my gym that have been studying like training with me for years and they're just seeing the fruits of it all and they're going actually I could and I've been telling them for years quit your job quit your job quit your job you will make a living out of it because mm. I could never do that I had to sort of you know be a personal trainer you know, do some massage, do do some like There's, you know, uh, always had to do classes, always had to do, do some privates, yeah, yeah, do a yeah, fight. Yeah. The fight never was you never, never paid for full anything. time fighting. Yeah, you never the fight paid for me to go to California. The fight paid for me to go to Thailand. Yeah, the yeah, fight yeah, paid yeah, for yeah, me to yeah, do. Yeah. It never put food on my table. Yeah, it was never that money in. There was never that. I got paid a hundred quid for my first fight. Wow. I got a, I got a, my first check from Zufa. I still have, yeah. right? After deductions and after my, because I was in LA, yeah, training at the time with Eric and when we went out with James, yeah. and they called me, oh, we got you set up if you want to go do your medicals, and I'm like, where is it? I go, oh, I just, I'm like, I don't, I don't know where that is. Yeah. Uh, all right, and then what? Well, basically, we waited until I got there for the week before the fight yeah which was another f crazy experience because i remember getting in a van and going to do the blood and the physical with like uh who was who came in the van rashad evans was there wow uh uh david luan david Luazo, the f Lorenzo. Yeah. yeah so uh like um, yeah. GSP's, like the, the the black guy from GS, GSP's oh, gym. The Thai guy, the Thai guy. Yeah, Thai yeah, boxer. Yeah, what's yeah. His name? Really cool. Yeah, David, yeah, yeah. David. David, some, yeah. Lozon or something. Lozon. Lozon. Something, Lozon. Like, Lozon. Something, like, something like that. But I always remember because I was walking from, because it was like a, a building like this. You go outside, like a, a like two story building, and, and we've got our bloods done here and the physicals done here. So you have to walk across to get them done. And I was walking back with, uh, with Rashad Evans, right? Yeah. And he saw David walking up here. And like David's like Canadian, French speaking yeah. Canadian. And he's like, hey Dave, what are you? And he's like, he goes, are you limping? Or are you just pimping? And I'm like, this is, <laughs> oh, this is yeah. hilarious. This is, and there's little old me like yeah, yeah, yeah. plundering along and them talking, you know, with whatever. I do. remember going to the fight and cause GSP was supposed to fight Matt Hughes, right? And he oh. pulled out because of injury, but he was there. And uh, I remember sharing the van with GSP and him talking about B BJ Penn taking the fight and stuff like this. It's just like, 
Wow. This is really cool. I mean, we wow. shared the plane with Bisping and his he no cuz uh his jiu-jitsu coach uh was competing on the show. Okay. So we shared the flight over. So it's just a great, you know, I'm, I'm wandering around. Great, you know, Matt Hughes coming in. Oh, you you okay to use the room, like the the warm the, the workout room. I oh, was okay for us to jump on and this was at the time when Matt Hughes was coming in and you had Tim Silver walking in behind him. You had like, uh, um, you know, all that all that crew Entre come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like all that militage that kind of crew yeah, walk yeah, in. Yeah, and, and, military, and we're like, yeah, oh my yeah. God, this is cool, you know it's what I mean? crazy. So it's a great uh, experience, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, great experience. And, uh, and I, I'll never forget it. This was back in the time when like Tim, um, uh, uh, like it was, it was like yeah, the matchmaker was asking the questions. They didn't have massive amounts of staff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh so it was all it was all wow. I mean, this is UFC sixty three. You know, what we're on now, like two hundred and something, right? Two two twenty was it? So it was cool, it was a good time. I mean never trade that, but again, nah. I don't like to bang on about it because it was a it was I hear what you say. I shouldn't have been there. But I made use of yeah. it you and then like i got another fight in manchester uh but again i wasn't it wasn't a full i wasn't training full time or i was still holding Did down jobs and train stuff. full time for us no i've never i've never trained full time for a fight i've always run my i've always you've always ran your i've always run my business or had a job yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so th th yeah. what i consider full time was me literally like, li when i eat sleep yeah i was just repeat trying to make a living repeat. training and teaching yeah and uh, uh the only time i sort of come close to it was where I did the gym i'm at now um and i only did the fight because i had a good facility to train in i never had that this, i had to create current yeah i had to yeah. create what i wanted what, team crossface yeah. people team crossface. i had to create that what i wanted to where i wanted to train yeah and did not just do that and train that to run yeah. it yeah, yeah, yeah i yeah. mean make the connections and move it there the only i think when some of the guys appreciated what i've done is when i uh, when i went out to uh india for the super fight league and okay. was out there for a few weeks i got like one of my guys charlie leary to run the gym he it was good timing because he just got made redundant from his job and went right don't go and get another job yeah i'll pay you to run the gym for while i'm away Perfect. and you can like yeah yeah, yeah train yeah so he got an, an aspect of what i had, had to do well not had train to train yeah, yeah yeah and run a gym he's like oh my god i don't know how you did it i said yeah you did it for a couple of weeks with this yeah. already set up so yeah, i've had yeah. to and again it was never really a plan of mine it was just sort of yeah something that's just unfolded on things, the way things happen for a reason right everything in life happens for a reason and things feels like from what you're telling us with the story things fell in place for a reason for you in your journey towards yeah i mean running. again for me like uh it's given because of my journey to where it is now i've tried to be a part of like the like i've tried to be a brick in the road yeah that the that's now because now you can you know it do jitsu and mma is everywhere yeah like i remember when i used to work at the gym mm -hmm. Uh, I'd have, I'd probably fought in, I probably had fought in the UFC by this time and I'd left, I've been two years at this one gym, so two years, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't hold a job down longer than yeah, two yeah, years, yeah. right? Yeah, close, close. So I left that job and got another job in another gym and uh, just, I was there technically a month, I think, uh, officially about a week. Yeah. And one day my uniform just, just didn't fit in my bag. And I always remember because this girl that was being, she just got a job there as a personal trainer yeah. and the manager was like showing her around. Oh, this is, uh, oh, this is David, one of our, Style. oh yeah, here's my uniform, mate. I'm, I'm not here anymore, tell her. Yeah, yeah. And, and she become, I, I trained her because she oh, was, because yeah. uh, she, she knew I'd study with the Czech guys. She wanted to um, do some work with me. So Sweet. end up training her, but, uh, um, yeah, I just couldn't fit my uniform in my bag one day and I went, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to go work for myself at my own little gym because I'm giving half my money to these guys. I might as well just keep it all and do less Makes and sense. I can train more, right? Yeah. So then that would start. Then I'd go, right, 
my at the, and at the time I was already teaching like my my little shared it outgrown the yeah, people yeah. I was training. So I would then go train like get a scout hall or rent the squash court or yeah. something like this. And then at this time, um, uh, my guys were fighting on shows. I was still competing. I was still fighting on like cage raid or no yeah. UCMA. It would turn into right. Yes, yes, yes. So still fighting there, um, and still so I was still competing keeping active, keeping active. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah still competing uh, this time i would fight guys like you know i would fight brad pickett uh i would fight um vaughn harvey back then now vaughn lee, vaughn lee yeah. um and i would still be fighting at a decent level here yeah, and high profile guys yeah, yeah good level guys you know still competing with some of the yeah, yeah. guys you know um and i was teaching and then i was teaching out of scout hall and some guys were running a local show in watford okay. uh and they wanted some of my guys to fight so they would go fight on there and then it then what would happen is that show the two guys that were doing that show one of them would pull out to like promote it so then they asked me to sort of help promote the show run the show match make and stuff so i started doing that and then it turned out everyone bailed on me and i end up just running the show anyway and I thought, oh, I'd screw doing this. And then one yeah. of my guys that I was training, who was training with us, helped me out on the night. Dave, yeah. do you need help? I went, yeah, yes, bro. Please. I got to warm people up. I got to wrap hands. I got to pay everybody. This is crazy. Yeah. And uh, he helped me and he really enjoyed it. Yeah. So then we would go on and um, promote 11 shows under the this um, KO banner. Right. Um, back in the day. KO's in, not the KO, that. The, the gym KO. No, no, no. No, K, no this K. was K A Y O. Oh, okay, okay. I hate no, not okay, no. K O, but yeah. spelt. <laughs> but that, that again, I never wanted to promote a show. It just, it just fell in my lap. Yeah. And I went, well, and I had to, I just, I did it to save the show because I had five guys five. fighting on it. Yeah. I've even, I've even fought on a show that I've had five guys fighting on. Wow. I remember one time my friends, I had a, the, where we had a place in Watford, in the Coliseum there, um, it was getting shut down to refurbish, so we moved it. We moved the event to a place in Slough, and I think some guys that fought on the show thought, "Oh, this would be cool. We could do this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So though my my friends uh, James Lutman and that would do a show there called TMT, and uh, they would dip their first show, and I had f about four or five guys fighting on the show, and they phoned me the week before, "Oh, we've had a pullout. Have you got anyone to fight this guy?" Yeah. I'm sitting at breakfast with, I think it was in Portsmouth on another show. Right. And uh, all four of us sitting around the table eating. And everyone said, well, I'll do it. He said he'd do it. He said he'd do it. He said he'd do it, right? So I'm relaying this as I'm having this conversation. Yeah, yeah, and I just yeah. went, for a laugh, right? I've gone, well, if I'll do it at all. I'll say I'll do it, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and that was that. And then they phoned me and back. Bam, you... I went, yeah, you can do it. I went, oh, it's, not, it's a week. It's like next week. I'm like, Oh, right. and and it was against like a kid that hadn't you know done anything, and yeah, yeah. he I think he he'd even trained with me for a bit. Wow! So, you know, it was I'm fighting a bum, yeah, per se. But it wasn't until uh, I'm cornering the fights, and it's like two fights to go. Wrapping hands, warming them up, cornering. And I went, I'm cornering the fight, and I'm like, oh, I better go warm up because I've got to go fight soon. Right, two fights before. Right, so I go warm up in it, and then as I've walked out, it was all comedy, man. Because even oh. I said, they said, "What walk out do you want?" I went, "I don't care, whatever." And I just did it to save, not save, but because yeah. someone just keep the show offered going. it, and and the show, my friend's show, right. And uh, even one of my guys, Shah, he put the freaking Culture Club song on. Does he really want to hurt me? Is my walk out, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's all a joke until we got to the door. Yeah. And it's like, don't forget, dude, this is a fight. I went, eh, and then sun dawned on me. Oh. oh, right, okay. And then it was in there, and it wasn't until the his glove went right past my like just yeah, brushed bro. past my face. I went, oh, yeah, this, on, if, nah, if this guy good. beats me, I'm done, right? Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. What? So, uh, funny enough, he I I think I spin kicked him. Karate days. Yep, yep. And uh, he took me down, I think. Pretty sure he took me down. Silly thing. Took me down. I turned him to Mount and, and, and Mother's Milked him. Like yep. The first ever Mother's Milk, Mother I believe. <laughs> Just saying. Which is quite funny because Eric was coming over the week after saying, and I go, Eric, you never guess. Because <laughs> where, where did I learn the Mother's Milk? With Eric. With Eric, of course. But where? Where? Right here. 
the really? first time, yeah, we come here. 2010? Yeah, so I, yeah. and I, I think I just got my brown belt at the time, around that ah, okay, time. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so I hadn't, hadn't, hadn't trained, like physically rolled yeah, with Eric yeah, yeah. or anything for a while. So we're sitting on the mat here with the seminar and yeah, he goes, yeah. let's, let's roll. I went, yeah, bro, let's roll, man. I'll, be, I'll show you something, you know what I mean? I'll show you what I've got brown now. Bell. Brown bell, bro, you know what I mean? I've been yeah, getting yeah, yeah. good, yeah. And I never forget, it was like a steamroller, yeah, and a leaf. Me being the leaf, Eric being a steamroller, and all I could do was like make a noise and blink my eyes, yeah. <laughs> like this, yeah. And I remember when he's like, it was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And he's got mount, he's killing me, and he's just, mother's milk me. And I'm just, he goes, and then as he's laughing, he goes, <laughs> mother's milk. Yeah. <laughs> what was that, man? Yeah. yeah mother's milk. Mother. No, what was, what, what is that? It's mother's milk. <laughs> Oh, okay, what, what, what did you do? And he's like showing me what they're doing. Like, yeah. All oh, right, cool. And then I get it in that fight. Yeah. Right. And and you, uh, and, and you can say, well, the guy wasn't good or whatever. But that I think I'm not sure. I haven't researched it or yeah, yeah, like, yeah. looked it up in any extent. But I'm pretty sure that's the first Mother's, mother's Milk submission in MMA history. Wow. Pretty sure. There you go. Maybe. There you go. But <clears throat> then I would go do. Uh, this is really funny. I was in a, I'd go do a grappling tournament uh, at um, Jimmy Johnson's place. Uh, in Bournemouth. In Bournemouth. Yes. I took a couple of guys there to compete, right? Yeah. I didn't, I wasn't competing. And then my friend goes, oh, Dave, I go, what? I goes, I've signed you up. I'm like, what, what oh, did you do oh, that for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're on in a bit, mate. You better get ready. I'm like, oh, mate, you've got to be kidding me. So I think I even fought Jimmy. Like we like in the advanced category or whatever. I think I fought Jimmy. Wow. And then I fought some other guy. And in the final, I get Mount. And I got, like, my, my nephew was there. My friend Tolly was there. Um, I think I think Ollie Thompson was there. Actually, he was competing. Oh, cool! So we were all there, and, he, and they were all going. I get Mount, and then and it, uh, oh, now it's become my thing, right? At mother's this time. milk. Yeah. They were all there going, mother's milk, mother's milk, and everyone else going, what? Because it's only a gym, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's looking at him going, what are you? I remember being in Mount, looking at them shouting mother's milk, and <laughs> yeah. everyone else going, what are you talking about? And I went, oh yeah, boom. Bam, got it on. Milk. So you, I got it again in this yeah. grappling. Did you, did you tell her it? No, it's it just a yeah. gym grappling comp. Yeah, but still. But then I fought again, and this is funny because I fought um, I fought Ashley Grimshaw. Yeah. Uh, ages ago up in uh, Norwich. Oh, I had a okay. great fight. With, uh, one of my best fights. Nice. Uh, one of my best fights. It was a great two round fight. It was cool. We had great exchanges. Really felt like it was a really good performance yeah. for myself really had a good time and uh, you know you know you know like when you do stuff my my idea when you when you fight is if you can transfer what you do in the gym sparring in, and like, put it in a fight yeah 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 then you're then you're there that's yeah. what i always try to get my guys to do and i never thought i could manage it like never thought i'd found that yeah and i thought of, i kind of found it in that fight yeah really hit like a groove yeah and uh and I beat him and I won this belt and stuff. And then I would go on and win the UCMA belt. And I remember Ashley going, oh, if you win two belts, that's not so out of order. I'm like, all right. I won that and I held the two belts. And then uh, uh, I would fight Ashley again on UCMA. And he beat me. And it was like, and it was it was devastating. Because, not devastating, but what happened, this was uh, before the, before, yeah, this was before I think the mother's milk incidents yeah, yeah yeah but he would beat me and then a few years later we would we would uh i beat him and a few years later i'd fight him but my student at the time was doing like a film degree right so he goes oh could i film you like yeah. as my subject for my end of year like Pro whatever yeah, yeah. Went, yeah cool man no problem and it was that fight that he was filming me uh, and it was uh, like oh, this is really bad because you're filming me and it looks really bad. I've just lost. Yeah. So he would continue to film me and I'd go on and fight um, another guy in uh, South End, uh, Thomas from uh, Norway. Thomas Hitton, Hitton? Yeah. From Norway. And that was just as Eric was coming over. And this would be um, uh, probably after the two Mother's Milks. Oh, okay, okay. After the two. <clears throat> and it was hilarious. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm, he's filming the fight. Yeah, right? and he's like in my corner filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, l little local show. I get the mother's milk again. And what happened? I'd just been out to California. I've been out to California to train, 
And at the time, it was heavy times for me because I had a little gym in Harrow and uh, my first sort of full-time gym yeah. and it was killing me. The rent was killing me. The reason I took the fight was to pay the rent of the gym. Okay. It was pretty serious. You know, like, it was pretty financially crazy. And uh, I'd been out to train with Eric. I just had a show previous to that my wow. that I put on. And uh, um, so I thought, oh, I'll make the money from the show, go to train. But, but the show dived and I owed money for the show. So I was now in debt with the show. My friend Mans was really gracious and kind enough to go, well, I'll, I'll pay the flights because I had a bike accident probably two about a year before that. Wow. And I was expecting a payout for, from the bike accident. Yeah. So I said, listen, man, I'll, I'll definitely be able to give you the money back because I'm waiting on insurance money to come for, for this accident. Yeah. All right, cool. He bought me with a flight. He, we stayed at his aunt's house, so we didn't pay for any accommodation. Yeah. Totally like helped me out. Like, making me train like doing the training and we would go out to train and we would train at uh, the Mendes brothers gym because he's my friends in the, like heavy in the jujitsu yeah. which is another funny story he come to Eric's to train and like everyone's heel hooking him in the gi and they're like well you can, you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to against yes. the rules and like Eric's like and, then, and he doesn't he doesn't train full time like every day twice yeah. a day didn't, didn't do it yeah. so he's a hobbyist you know so we were training every day we train the Mendes brothers in the morning and Eric's Eric, in the evening. Yeah. And we stay out all day because we was staying in Agora Hills, which is like North LA, traveling down an hour and a half to train Costa Mesa at the AOJ and then traveling another like half hour, 40 minutes True. to go train at Eric's, right? <clears throat> and we'd, I'm doing a kickboxing class in the evening and he's asleep on the couch out the front. And Eric's like, where's, where's, your, where's your friend? And I went, Oh, he's a jujitsu guy, man. He's he's asleep out there. He's not used to it. He goes, ah, oh, false sense of security. It always <laughs> makes me laugh thinking about it. But yeah, but f thanks to him, yeah, uh, uh, I could do the trip. You but I bust my knee the first day. Oh, bust it like didn't you know? It was just my knee tore up, and I didn't know what I actually done to it. It popped, and everyone heard it. But I managed to tape it up and just crack on. Had to. Yeah. But in saying that, in the fight, I'm warming up. So I get back, I've got two weeks to the fight. So I get my weight down, my knees all taped up. But I can't make a triangle, even mount hurt. Like being in mount hurt, because it hurt my knee. Yeah. And I end up doing the fight, Good, okay fight, you know. Got to the floor, uh, got mount, boom. Just hit the, hit the, yeah, just milk. hit the mother's milk straight out the gate, Bam. finished it. And what's so funny is, uh, I think you can, you can watch the documentary on, uh, on Vimo. And, okay. And uh, you see the, He's in the corner with the thing, and you hear the because he's no, he's here like no. trying to breathe, and you just hear this <laughs> this like raspberry. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Hilarious. You might have to watch it a couple of times, keep your ear out. <laughs> but it's the funniest thing. And then when I fun, when I won the fight, everyone's going, "I'm going mother's milk," and it's like the third time I'm getting it. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah I got it again." And I just hit it all the time in training. Yeah, and like all my guys used to try it, you know. And then uh, I got it again. And then all the guys that come to see me, the, the announcer's gone. Even like, because who's um, Jude Samuel. Yes. Uh, and uh, 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 f f another UFC guy. Yeah. Uh, what is, uh, I'm really, that's really, my mind's gone blank. But they, the, the, the uh, commentating, and I have no idea what I've done. Some sort of neck crank. What was his name, that guy? I'm really sorry. I'm, Another fellow big eared fighter, oh, fought in the UFC a bunch of times. I forget, my ear, ear have come flashing back okay. to me. But um, they didn't know what it was. And then the announcer just said it was like a neck crank or something. And all my lot have gone, no, it's the mother's milk. milk. So they, yeah. when you watch the fight, they cut it and have to then announce it as the mother's milk. Even on my record on, on the sure dog, it just says it smother. It doesn't oh, say mother's milk. Man. I should write into him. Yeah, do it, do it, but, because um, that needs to get exposed. But man, then because... I was—I remember being in South End in the morning. Yeah, Frankie and Benny's having breakfast, and uh, I called Eric because Eric, I think, was coming over that weekend. Right. Just landed to do seminar, do the tour. Do his tour, yeah. Yeah, I got it again, man. You never believe it. I got it again. I said you never guess what I got. He went mother's milk. I went yeah, there again. You go, there you go. <laughs> nice, really nice. Funny. That's cool. Man. But I learned. I yeah, I learned the mother's milk. Here, right here right here right about these there mats. on the mat 
yeah, hilarious. Crazy times, crazy times. But yeah, they, I mean, again, it just, it was never... All this then, all, so, so like listen to your story, listen to like how it all started. It's, it's, it's a great, crazy ass story. Yeah, I'm probably missing bits and like... Yeah, of course. Again, you know, we, it was never a plan, that's what I'm saying. So that's for what, me... Yeah, it it always, just, you just went with the flow of it. But n now look where you are with your own... With your own, with your yeah, own gym, yeah. your own, your own team, team crossface, and under that you've got now you're saying a, a, a team full of fighters. They're going on to achieve big things. In they fought on shows like Brave. They fought all over the world, man. What other shows have? have I mean, done? yeah, I mean the good, like I said, I'm trying to put the brick in the road yeah. that I never had. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, for me, like I said, like for, for me, like I got two kids and I want my kids to do better than me. So I always think of my students or kids. people that are trained with me as my family. Oh. I mean, I probably, um, I probably lost a lot of time with my family because of my work and my, Love. my involvement in my yeah. team, because it's something that I've had to grow. So for me, I've like gone on, I, like I said, I don't think I've ever had a fight career, right? Because I've been trying to make something yeah. all the time. So I think now I got, I'm just seeing it around about now where guys can come into my gym and see a career. Yeah. They can, like, I got guys that will quit their job, because, get some sponsors. Yeah. All right. They probably earn a bit more money now working in like a, 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 a low end job, but they're, they're able to follow their, career, their, dream. their dreams in a career in MMA. And yeah. that's, that's the beauty of it. And that's the evolution of it because. MMA, back when, this makes us feel a little bit better when you were doing it, you couldn't really earn a career unless you you no. were in. I mean, even in, now, the money isn't there just Fully, but, fully, yeah. But like, I was getting paid 100 pounds to like 15, 1,500 quid to, yeah. to, to fight. And now you could probably like, five some grand. of my guys, yeah, four or five grand, some of them 20, 25, yeah, 30 go. grand. Depends on what shows you're fighting on. But there are the shows there now, and the yeah. career path and, and, is and there. And talking of the shows, like you've got the UFC who are doing amazing things as always. But now the the new one for me, like that, I I think that fighters are getting more of a chance, and fighters worldwide are getting more of a chance. It's one championship, right? Yeah, they like, got one. I think, I think, well, well, I think right. you have UFC, don't you? you? Have UFC? Yeah. Then you probably got the next one in the line. It, it is probably Bell uh, Bellator. Yeah. And then you have like contending for that third well i would say one fc would be yeah. the third and then you contend in for the fourth space depending on yeah. geographically where you're looking you've got like your brave combat federation and then like in the states like your lfcs and yeah. here you've got the cage warriors and stuff like that yeah. that are contend like they're bubbling These around that doing level great things in the sense of giving the, the next generation yeah, and an the generation now a proper opportunity yeah um they're getting good money for it get a living from it they can actually put food on the table with it and it, i think it's just going to get on to better yeah i think better, as better. well the 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 landscape like you've seen it change as well you fought in a time when no one knew like one thing that i remember now is not too long ago we was up in newcastle yeah. for uh, a bellator right uh, and we're coming out the lift. Last, last, not last year, year before, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About summer like, it's very hard to keep track of space and time yeah, at the yeah. moment. But um, we're coming out the lift. Yeah. And there was like a family in front of us. You know, it's, it's always funny when you, like, I remember when I fought in the UFC, they put us up at the Lowry in Manchester, like a five star hotel. So people were just walking around going, what are these people doing in this hotel? Yeah. So they put you up in a nice hotel, right? So I forget where we were, maybe a Marriott or something in, in Newcastle. But a family, like mum, dad, young kid, daughter, yeah. say. I've walked out the lift and we're all coming down to, yeah. to do the weigh-ins or do something. Yeah. And the, and the, and the, the mum has gone, oh, those are the uh, like MMA guys. Which was cool, man. Yeah, because, because, because before it would be, oh, they're the cage fighters, yeah. or they're the fighters, or they yeah. would have said it in such a way it would be like a derogatory yeah, term. Yeah. Whereas this was like an educated, yeah. like an informed, uh, like description Some, of yeah, what they absolutely. were. Absolutely. So that was really cool. So I think the landscape of MMA now it's is, it, yeah, it's blown up, and people know what it is. Yeah. Like I'd be on the on the train going somewhere, and people would just look at my ear. Or ears and go, oh, you're a rugby player, yeah. or they can't make sense of it because I'm too small. But now, people, oh, you you do MMA, yeah, you fighter, you fighter, and it's that's like very 
common. Yeah, yeah. So which is good it means it's the landscape good. people are educated. People so, are getting educated, and not yeah, the average person is getting educated, and it's great, and I, it's so good to see. In terms of now, Dave, where people can find you, because obviously we've not touched on that, but yes, where can they find you? It's Team Crossface at Watford, but in terms of social media platforms, how can they follow you on Insta and Facebook? And yeah, you Facebook? can you can just Google me, man. You know, stick yeah. my oh, name yeah, in Google, Google. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But the trouble is, is David Lee's very uh, uh, um, common. Yeah. kind of name so if you're looking for me on instagram it wouldn't let me have uh the david lee <laughs> so i'm i'm one david lee because yeah, obviously that's, num right. that's the first one that comes up it's you know, simple one. and then on the uh, on insta on, on, on no, facebook i'm a david lee yes uh and on um instagram just put team crossface in and it comes up i'm yeah. technically like mma watford team crossface but yeah if you just We'll have the links here, guys. So if you're watching, obviously from wherever, you'll see the links. We'll we'll get you guys and give 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 Dave and his team team at Watford a follow, guys. And um, they they're going on to doing amazing things. He's got a line of fighters that you're gonna see absolutely tear it up later on this year. So they're gonna be going on to do bigger and better things. And one day, guys, we're gonna be getting Dave here to do a seminar for us as well here at the Pleasure. academy. So I'm looking forward to it, guys. Uh, but once again, Dave, I appreciate you. Coming rambling, out all rambling this way, on. telling us and exp and sharing your stories with us. We could be here all night listening to it, but I appreciate you uh, sharing your time with us. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very much.